Welcome to Bobcat Stadium on the campus of Frostburg State University. It's the Mountain East Conference Women's Soccer Championship game between the Fairmont State Falcons and the Frostburg State Bobcats. Michael Minnick alongside Adam Zundel. And Adam, these two teams have had successful seasons, and they had thrillers in the semifinals to get to this point. Yeah, how about uh, Fairmont State waiting until 13 seconds left in regulation, find the game winner, a beautiful finish on that one. And meanwhile in Frostburg, Charleston knocked off Concord in its first matchup and a little bit of an upset there came upset minded here to Frostburg State double overtime but the Bobcats were able to find a winner and we have two teams from the North Division battling it out here today to take home the Mountain East Conference tournament title. Frostburg comes in with a record of 18-1-1. and Fairmont State 12-3-4. These two teams just played last week. It was a 1-0 win for Frostburg State. Tony Fiaco and Meisner scoring in the 56th minute. The Bobcats had a 10-4 advantage in shots over the Falcons. So the fact that they're home, the fact they have a better record, the fact that they just won, I would say makes them a slight favorite coming into this match. Yeah, and I don't, I honestly, I don't buy into the it's tough to beat a team three times because if you are the better team, um, you know, you should be winning that game. But the first time these two teams met, it was a 3 nothing win for Frostburg. Last time, one nothing win for Frostburg. That match was a lot more even than I think um, that, that you, you referenced the shots, but it was a pretty well-played, even match. And how about that strike from Tony Fiaco Miser in that game to win? It was a laser. She is real special, and she's really special here in the tournament, uh, getting hot. She had a, a brace a couple of games ago in the opener, then put uh, uh, helped out. Uh, put the game away against Charleston, so she is on a roll here. Starters for this one for Frostburg State. Ashley Bilger gets the nodding goal. Number zero, junior from Ellicott City, Maryland. Field starters are number two, Mackenzie Alonzo. Number three, Kayla Robinson. Number five, Carolyn DeSena. Number eight, Hannah Thompson. Number nine, Carly Gillette. Number 10, Leela Clark. Number 11, Caroline Burton. Number 14, Catherine Smith. Number 17, Abby Dennis, one of the best defenders in this conference. Number 19, we've talked about her, Tony Fiaco Miser, and then she'll be joined by Skylar Ehart. The starting lineup for Fairmont State, Taylor Kennedy gets the nodding goal, senior from Ripley High School. Starters in the field, number five, Gracie Smith. Number seven, Ari Christensen. Number eight, Mackenzie Gillespie. Number 10, Kira Kuzinski. We'll talk a lot about her throughout this one. Number 11, Riley Miara. Number 13, Jessica Snyder. Number 15, we mentioned her, Lesbia Alejandra Puerto Sorto. Number 16, Trisha Lamasters from Fairmont Senior. Number 17, Ava Bear, and number 25, Emily Wallen. Frostburg State in the home whites, attacking from left to right here in the first half. Fairmont State going from right to left. Frostburg State. Playing a 3-5-2, and I think, Adam, that's a formation that's become a lot more popular in recent years. I'll be back to that point here in a second as Fairmount State attacks up the left side. It's Kuzinski getting a touch early. Pass back is off the mark. That allows Frostburg State back in the play, and then a turnover in the back to Riley Miara. Yeah, Michael, actually, West Virginia State plays in that three-back system as well. That's the team that Fairmont State just beat the other day. Uh, I think Wheeling plays a little bit of uh, that same as well, so it's not uh, so this won't be Fairmont State's. Uh, it's not just Frostburg State in that three-back system, and when you have a player like Abby Dennis as that anchor right in the middle, uh, you can uh, do a lot of things. And we've seen really throughout the world in soccer the prevalence of outside backs getting forward, so that just enhances that because you have kind of that, that – three kind of to anchor things, then those outside backs have the freedom to attack or come back and give you five defenders if you don't have the ball. Yeah, it's, bu it's built into that system. Rather when at 4-4-2, you have the, your outside backs that are uh, obviously like to go forward and, and kind of sometimes def defending as an afterthought. Now you have uh, three 
defenders that are really dedicated to grinding it out on that side. And one of the things that Frostburg State does that's, that's really impressive is, is they play hard back to front. Uh, we talked about Tony Fiaco miser She's got 14 goals and five assists, but we will see her all over the field today. She plays with a lot of energy. So it's team defending. I know coaches say that all the time. Um, it's not just the back line. It's not just the goalkeeper. It's, it's total team defending. And, and you see that from Frostburg State. As many shutouts as they've had this year, 12, I think. Um, terrific uh, you've got two of the best defensive teams here. They do it a little bit in different ways. Fiaco Miser has the game-winning goal in the last three matches for Frostburg State and nine game winners on the year. Yeah, that's uh, best in the country, I believe. So uh, that is one of my favorite soccer stats is game-winning goals because sometimes you can kind of pile them up as we have a deep throw in here. Um, but if are you scoring important goals? And she is scoring a lot of goals, and she's scoring a lot of important goals. I mean, nine of, 14, nine of her 14 goals have been game winners. That is, that is really special. And she wreaked havoc the other night against Charleston, just getting in the back line and, and creating opportunities as uh, the first corner kick here is about ready to come in. It would be Gracie Smith taking it for Fairmont State. From the right side, right footed ball, Ben 10 towards the six and headed on frame and a good save. A great job there from Ashley Bilger to get down and block that one. Yeah, a couple things here. How about Gracie Smith with that corner kick? She absolutely delivered on the game-winning goal against West Virginia State. She served that ball in from about 35 yards as we have another look at this corner kick. How about right to the head on that far post? That is beautiful service there and an even better save, but a good start here for Fairmont State trying to manufacture something off the set piece. Yeah, Kuzinski was able to just kind of load and, and shoot that and get, you know, get a snap header on that, forcing a really good save. Got it low too, which is what you want to do. Yeah, and again, some of these uh, uh, goals that these teams have scored this this season have been really, really class goals. Uh, again, we talked about Fiaco Miser's goal against Fairmont State. It was an absolute laser. And then the game winner for the Falcons the other day. The time's winding down, and Gracie Smith serves one from, I don't know, 35 yards right to the head of Lesbia Alejandro Puerto Suerto for the, for the goal. A little bit of controversy over that throw, but it will be Frostburg State's <laughs> taken by Caroline Burton, Hedgesville High School alum, just a little bit east in the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia, coming to Frostburg State. Yeah, if we're trying to put this game in perspective and what it means potentially moving on, everybody wants to win a trophy, right? So we watch this one play out. Both the teams in contention for an NCAA yeah, that looks good. tournament spot. That looks good. Frostburg State has to be feel pretty comfortable in – and getting a spot win or lose today, Fairmont State likes to think it might be in after a win against West Virginia State. But uh, you can certainly guarantee your spot if you get that automatic berth with a victory today. Pull it up out of the back from Frostburg State. Played left there by Skylar Ehart. Chance there on the edge of the box for the Bobcats to get across, and it's blocked. Cleared away by Gracie Smith for Fairmont State. Back into the 18 it comes. Smith again put to work and knocks it out for a throw in. Right on her back there with some really good pressure. It was Frostburg State. It was Hannah Thompson who's scored three goals this year. Throw in will be easy stuff for Taylor Kennedy coming off her line. Yeah, and that's something I was going to ask you, Adam, was obviously a sense of urgency for both these teams, but does Frostburg State maybe not need this one as much as Fairmont State does. Well, they don't need it to get into the NCAA yeah. tournament, but but everybody, again, wants to win a trophy. They want to um, be considered champions. Uh, with divisional play, you know, you don't have a true regular season champion in terms of the overall conference. So, you know, you do have that going for you if you can say that you won the tournament. Early shot and another oh, good big save, time on the save. Offense from Taylor Kennedy as it was whipped across by Leela Clark. Big time save there by Taylor Kennedy. First team, all Mountain East Conference goalkeeper. How about a really quick shot there? It was actually Fioko Miser with the attempt. Yeah. Corner kick for Frostburg State. Bent towards the far post and headed wide by the Bobcats' Catherine Smith. Two good chances, I think, for each, or one good chance for yeah. each uh, squad here. An entertaining start to this one. Um, I like the teams trying to go after it and get a goal. Sometimes we don't get that in a final, but uh, uh, early on, both teams trying to get on the board here. Both these goalkeepers have been in great form. Bilger for Frostburg State, 0.53 goals against average, just nine goals allowed. 
Kennedy for Fairmont State, 0 0.65 goals against average and just a dozen goals allowed. Tangle here will play on. Far side, the Bobcats will chip it up that left side. Ushered out by Fairmont State's Emily Wallen for a throw in. Yeah, Frostburg is, is just kind of a, a, a team that can do it in a lot of different ways. They can get you on set pieces. They can also counter. They can possess. So a lot of good attacking options for the Bobcats. Ball played up for Fioko Miser. She's got it on the left side, trying to get an angle and runs out of space on that sideline, giving away a throw into Fairmont State. Seven and a half minutes into this one. You know, interestingly enough, in that one nothing game a couple, uh, well, last week between these two squads, uh, uh, Fairmont State's leading goal scorer, Kira Kaczynski, did not play in that game. She's been battling an injury. She did play all 90 against West Virginia State the other day. Uh, she's got a wrap on the knee, so she's battling that. But for Fairmont State, who has not scored in two games against Frostburg State, having her in the lineup and having her be as active as, and as good as she can be is really important for the Falcons here today. Corner kick coming for Frostburg State and Leela Clark. Bent in towards the middle over everybody. Handed on the opposite side by the Bobcats, Catherine Smith, and she can't save it. Throw in for Fairmont State. Set piece is so important in a game like this, and Frostburg State not able to do much with that one. Yeah, anytime you're in tournament play, you kind of hold your breath on corners and outside. Combination gives a chance for the Bobcats. Shot will be caught by Taylor Kennedy off the right foot of Mackenzie Alonzo. As, you, as you're looking at the field here, a lot of lines as a uh, you know, multi-purpose facility. <laughs> it's a great facility too here at Bobcat yeah, it Stadium. It's terrific. Um, and, and talking about a, you know, two teams that are new to Division II to a certain degree, uh, Fairmont State not starting the program until you know, the early 2015, 2016 uh, seasons in Frostburg State, uh, transitioning from NCAA Division III to Division II, successful Division III women's soccer program, um, and has done well in that transition to Division II, playing for a championship, uh, looking to get into the NCAA tournament. I think you brought that up because I was thinking the same thing coming in. It's like these are two teams that have done a lot in a very short period of time to get to this level. Uh, Frostburg State keeping that pressure on. Uh, again, Ken good read by Kennedy. But you're seeing some quick play there by Frostburg State to try and spring forward. It was Alonzo nearly getting the end of that one for the Bobcats. Session given back by the Falcons. One back in midfield by Trisha Lamasters. Mentioned her earlier. Shows to stay home after a great career at Fairmont Senior. Led the Polar Bears to the state championship game as a senior. Have a lot of uh, state natives for both of these teams. For Fairmont State, a lot of West Virginia natives. natives. For Frostburg State, a lot of Maryland natives. Of course... Lesbia Alejandra Puerto Sorto, the star player for Fairmont State, played just down the road at Bishop Walsh High School in Cumberland, Maryland. So she chose to cross the border to play for Fairmont State. Defector, I guess, to a certain degree. <laughs> From Honduras originally. <laughs> well, uh, may ooh, I should maybe not have used that terminology then. What a path for her, though, to go from Honduras to Cumberland and then to a final just up the road in Frostburg. Throwing yeah. controlled by Fairmont State's Jessica Schneider. And she's going to be an important role here because it is a, uh, you know, they do, Fairmont State does have two at the top, but she is really the one that kind of holds things up and tries to control the ball and have others play off her. Throw for Burton and Frostburg State into the 18. Deflected there. Both teams appealing for that one, but it will be a goal kick for the Falcons. You're just joining us. We've had a great chance both ways. Both goalkeepers, Ashley Bilger for Frostburg State and then Taylor Kennedy for Fairmont State coming up with massive saves to keep the scoreless in the first five, ten minutes of this one. And it's been mostly on this end of the field the last few minutes. Yeah. And I, I think Kennedy sensing that is kind of slowing this thing down a little bit. Yeah, i got to control things here. Um, Frostburg State's had the better part of the possession and, and just, you know, Bounce things forward just like that. Went in that second ball and surrounding Fairmont State. We talked about their work rate and trying to get the ball back and 
See it on display here, making life very, very difficult here for the Falcons trying to get forward. You know, talking to Coach Borneo here before things got started. Really got to be patient against against Frostburg, but play with some purpose. When you when you try to hit things forward, just don't be hopeful and optimistic. Play play the ball forward with a purpose. A couple heads that will go out for another Fairmont State throw in. Really haven't seen a lot of time on the ball for either team. It's been a lot of wing play and a lot of throw ins. Yeah, the the pressure is. Uh, Intense here from Frostburg State. You, you mentioned it. So, you know, what do you got to do? You got to find a way and find some space. And then we see Puerto Sorto almost yep, unlocking tried. it one on three. Yep. And when those opportunities come, you, the Falcons have to get forward and try and take advantage of it. Ari Christensen will track this one out. Not out for a throw. Maybe had a little more time than she realized. Yeah. Under pressure from Mackenzie Alonzo. Could have maybe taken a touch and hit it back up the line. Deep throw here for Frostburg. Carolyn Burton will once again take it. Header went initially by Fairmont State. Second ball towards the sideline. Popped high by the Falcons for another throw in. Short target for Frostburg State is Carly Gillette. Beaten to that one. It will be a corner now, very deep for Frostburg State from the right side. See if they can do better on this side than they did from the left a few minutes ago. Once again, it'll be Caroline Burton. Right hand in the air, right footed ball will bend out towards the six yard box, headed wide. Looks like it was Catherine Smith there with the header. Once again, Fairmont State's got to win this first ball off the goal kick. Yeah, it certainly looks like Frostburg State's on the front foot here. See if Kennedy's going to hit one deep. And, and right now, Frostburg State's just really getting to those second balls. First time that time. And the first one, as you said. Pass deflected in the midfield. will fall to the feet of Frostburg State's Caroline DeSena. Now it comes for Smith on the right side. Ball comes wide, oh. cut out. Good step there by Fairmont State. Try and stem this tide here a little bit. Right now it's... All Frostburg State in possession. Riley Miara with the tackle there, junior from Pennsylvania. Cleaned up there in the back by the Bobcats once again, and excuse me, by the Falcons and Emily Wallen. Cross is blocked and cleared. Chance to shoot and a one hopper into the gloves of Taylor Kennedy. If you're Frostburg State, you got to love the way that this is going now. Uh, but some better quality chances, I think, are the are the key here because uh, it might take something special to beat Kennedy. And, and again, watching some of Frostburg play. Uh, they've been some special goals that they have scored this season. Burton had a, a terrific one. It was kind of off a, off a set piece, uh, but she chested it down and volleyed it in. It was, it was a beautiful goal, um, and that's what it takes. Pressure in the back can make a difference, too. Good steal from Puerto Sorto, but cut out. Good defending there from Frostburg State and Catherine Smith, who's been active in this first half. Ball comes right too far. Unfortunately for Fairmont State, really not much in support. Mm -hmm. So Ali Puerto Sorto had, a, had an opportunity there, but even if she won it, there were three white jerseys around that were going to make life difficult. Uh, but a, a, a good effort from her. Puerto Sorto looking for help there, playing it centrally. Turned over, pinballed towards the near side now. Thought about the early cross, did Caroline DeSena, but decided to go towards the end line. Pressured off the ball by Miara. Stolen back, though, by DeSena. Double team towards the corner. Wanted to get a corner kick there off the deflection, but it went through clean. Yeah, good work right there from DeSena, but uh, Fairmont State had a couple of players there to try and 
stop that attack. But again, you're seeing a good work rate here from Frostburg State, trying to generate something. If you're a Bobcat fan, you have to be really pleased with the way that this one has started as we're not quite halfway here, but uh, getting there. It's been Frostburg State. Uh, Fairmont State had a terrific chance off a set opportunity as a foul there whistled. But really, that's been all for Fairmont State has been that set opportunity. Well, on the point you made a couple minutes ago, how many players besides the two forwards have touched the ball past midfield in the last 10 or 15 minutes for Fairmont State? And even then, Kuzinski's barely touched the ball. Yeah, and again, she is uh, not, I don't think she's 100%. She's really key in this, but her at not 100%, you'd you, you take it. She's a first-team all-conference player, uh, just a really, really talented player. Uh, and you know, she, it's, it's a final. She's going to give it uh, all, all she has. Uh, but you're right, you, you need to get her more touches on the ball in, in whatever way you can. And uh, right now, you know, there's just white shirts surrounding Fairmont State every time they have that ball. Got to win it, got to switch, switch the point of attack here. Nice ball in early. Off her line comes Kennedy. It was a chip from Burton's right foot that nearly picked out Mackenzie Alonzo. Yeah, good job by Gracie Smith to shield the Frostburg player, allow her keeper to collect it. Smith and Kennedy teammates in high school, so they have really good chemistry there in the back. Can't be controlled there on the side by Alonzo, and it will be a Fairmont State throw. So, th so again, this is kind of the tough part here for Fairmont State, trying to build forward. Just feel like they need to try and move Frostburg State from side to side a little bit to try and create some space. Ooh. Tackle there, cleared away by Fairmont State. Getting a little physical out there. Near, near turnover. Yeah, three fouls whistled right now so far. They've all been on Fairmont State. Crossed deflected and cleared by Fairmont State and Gracie Smith. The ball stayed in, I thought it might be heading over. Went over a couple lines, but not the yellow one. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to say, I think we ta started talking about the lines and just need to make sure that uh, everybody watching home knows it's the yellow one that is their soccer lines. Early cross from Catherine Smith towards the middle. First touch by Fairmont State. And cleared there by their midfield. But once again, an island for Puerto Sorto. She can't get a firm touch or find a teammate, and the Bobcats recover. Now what, though, right? I mean, yeah. Fairmont State wins that ball and then just sends it forward and Frostburg back on the attack. The Falcons have to, I think, control that a little bit more, be a little bit more deliberate trying to build forward. Puerto Sorto on the ball now. Double teamed and loses out. Direct ball once again headed down by Christensen for Fairmont State. Second ball battled for and knocked forward. Side of the foot touch from Burton up that left side. But watched out by Emily Wallen for a goal kick. You know, thinking back to that game against Charleston the other night, the double overtime game as we have a sub come in here for Frostburg State. Desiree Mortimer. Um, you know, the play was a little bit almost uh, like fatigue uh, set in. Charleston kind of let it go. And, and again, Frostburg State's work rate ended up uh, being – key in that moment, chased down the ball, served it to Fiaco Miser, put the ball in. No golden goal in college soccer anymore, so Frostburg State scored with about seven minutes left and then had to hold on for the final final bit, but uh, I think the Bobcats were, you know, I don't think if you feel like you had the better of the play, you don't want to go to penalties, and so I think the Bobcats were happy to, to get that goal and have it stand and not go to penalties. Rare chance for the Falcons to get some players forward, but they lose the initial header. I think that's an underrated part of not fouling is you don't give the other team a chance to get some numbers forward and take that free kick. I mean, that was the first foul on Frostburg State in this game. Yeah, that's a good point. Time for Kennedy to distribute out of the back. That might be an adjustment, too, they make to get a couple more numbers for it. It's just Kennedy having it at her feet a little bit more. Yeah, it's just been so hard. She's hitting those those balls to midfield. And, and right now, Frostburg State's 
collecting a lot of them. Oh, how about that? Very nice steal there in the middle of the park for Fioko Miser. Early ball forward, good tackle coming back. Allows Fairmont State to recover. It was really good work there from Gracie Smith to break that up. Yeah, uh, really good individual efforts for, for both squads. You see why Fioko Miser is just so difficult to handle. She steps and makes that play, you know, really out of nothing as we have another look at it. Really good job winning that ball. And then you just mentioned Gracie Smith tracking back and disrupting things. So good individual efforts for both sides here. I think also that was key because you saw the defenders were a couple yards off there. So that, for, that could have been a touch and shot there for Frostburg State. Ball into space, given away. Smith playing it forward. Yeah, Fairmont State a little bit better here in the buildup. Puerto Sorto dumping Ooh. it into space, and really nobody making that run. The closest player was Ava Bear to that one. No, you're you're right. I think uh, helping, looking for some support there. There was space there, but no, but no maroon jerseys. But a little bit better connecting some passes from Fairmont State back to front. It goes without saying in most games, but I think especially the way this is played at Adam, the first goal is going to be critical. <laughs> if Fairmont State can get it, they can sit back a little bit and not have to put numbers forward. If Frostburg State can get it, then Fairmont State has to totally change their game plan. Yeah, and uh, you knew, I think you said it first, though. It is always important, right, um, it, getting that first one. To, you just play with a different mentality. If you play with a little bit of confidence. Um, yeah, I, you know, nobody wants to go down a goal in a final, but I, I think particularly too for Fairmont State that has not scored against Frostburg State, getting one would be, would have to feel huge. It's a good cross from Krasinski, and then the shot will be just over the bar, sailing away from Ava Bear. And I think Fairmont State got what they wanted early in terms of, you know that Kaczynski's not going to be the most mobile player because of her injury. You got it right to her head on a corner kick, and she put it where she needed to, and Bilger made a great save. Yeah, that uh, the Fairmont State's best opportunity, as we've seen them try have a little bit of difficulty in the buildup, has been off that set opportunity. So, you know, the Falcons are going to try and generate some more of those chances as but obviously wanting to do a little bit better in possession. And I think we've seen that here uh, as of late. Kinski Gillespie spilling it wide. Puerto Sorto will turn, run towards the 18, get it on her right foot, stumbles a bit. Oh, yeah. And draws the foul. Yeah, you saw her just get held up a little bit. And this is an important foul here. We just talked about set opportunities, a good opportunity for Fairmont State upcoming as she was just a handful to deal with as we have another look at it. Really good on the ball, back to goal. And you see that just that little tug there, that was enough for the foul. Rare that Abby Dennis is caught out of position like that, but Puerto Sorto is that kind of player that can do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's hard to win 100% of the time. Abby Dennis does <laughs> at a very high rate, but 100% of the time is a, is, a tough, is a tough task. You're talking about the co-defensive player of the year in the Mountain East Conference and Abby Dennis and, uh, you know, Puerto Sorto giving all she can here to challenge Dennis. Jessica Schneider has scored one goal. This would be a great time to get a second on this free kick. Chips it in, and that was always going high. Danger averted for Frostburg State. Yeah, we hear the crowd getting into it here. Good crowd on hand for this final. And we were it's always balmy in Frostburg yeah, in November, right? Yeah, I was just right? going to say, I have, <laughs> have, having worked in this area in the past, I've been here for football media days in August. It's been 32 degrees <laughs> in August in the morning, and it's 70s right now in November. We'll take it. You know, you make, you make no apologies. You take it, the weather when you can get it. It's a beautiful day, good crowd. We've had some good soccer here today. One of two finals in the Mountain East Conference. Today, the men's championship coming up later this afternoon. I'm not sure Kennedy knew there was pressure to her side there and didn't get that away with too much time to spare. Space for Puerto Sorto. Outside of the foot pass, looking for Kuzensky and easily cut out and cleared by Smith for Frostburg State. Good outside of the football here to spring Kuzensky on the left side. Right footed cross in towards the far post. Late run coming in. Broken up and given away for a corner kick. Uh, much better from Fairmont State. You said it though. That beautiful touch though, there by Puerto Sorto to spring Kaczynski. She was composed on the ball, served it across, thought 
Fairmont State might get to that back post, but really, all things told, you'd have to be really happy with earning a corner here. DeSena was the player at the far post that knocked it out for better safe than sorry. Service from Smith, another good one towards the penalty spot. First ball headed away. Second ball falls, but unable to get a shot off there was Trisha Wamasters, and she'll play it wide. Another good cross from Smith. Lots of maroon jerseys in there, but the first header won by Frostburg State, and they will counter. Ball up the line into space. Just a little too much space thrown onto that one. Yeah, Fairmont State has to be careful when they send those numbers forward. Frostburg State really good in a counter, have a lot of speed. So you have to pick your spots. I would say against that three back, that's the kind of pocket Kuzinski wants to get in, though, where she can cross that ball, get wide, force one of those, outs one of those three center backs to come over. Yeah, and that's what Fairmont State's trying to do, trying to essentially post up Puerto Sorto in the middle and then have players help and support on either side of her. And that's really the first time we've seen that sort of connection, though. For, so if you're Fairmont State, you're wanting to see a little bit more of that in the center of the park, have her hold it up and touch and have everybody play off of her. Michael Minnick, Adam Zundel here with you from Bobcat Stadium in Frostburg, Maryland, the Mountain East Conference Women's Championship game here on a beautiful Sunday. Championship week around the country in all classes, all divisions. Both these teams hoping to see their name one on one when the bracket's revealed. That would be a fair, uh, Mountain East Conference in a really good spot to try and qualify three teams, which has never happened in women's soccer. Uh, you have to wait until the bracket comes out to know what's going to happen. Whew. Beautiful footwork, and a shot is blocked. That was Carly Gillette making something happen for the Bobcats. Really good touches, individual effort there. Header into the 18, cleaned up by Fairmont State and Emily Wallen for a throw in. Carolyn Burton has pretty much popped off on both sides to take these longer throws near the 18. Gets the return ball in the corner, lefty ball in. Odd hop there for Kennedy to try and cover, but she does well. You're talking about Taylor Kennedy, 18 career shutouts as we have another look at it. Just spills it just a little bit, but you're right, that odd hop a little bit of like a short hop in baseball, but she covers it. Yeah, both of these keepers for their career averaging with goals against averages under one among the national leaders uh, for active players. Both have been called upon to make massive saves in the first few minutes of this game. Things have evened out a little bit more since then in terms of clear chances. Yeah, and I think the task for Kennedy is a, is a little bit uh, different or, or you know, even a little bit more as she, distribution has been a, a key part here for Fairmont State, not so much for Frostburg State, but playing out of the back and, and what she needs to do to try and help the Falcons get forward. Free kick for Frostburg State and Abby Dennis played up the middle, flicked on off a couple bodies. And it'll fall for the Falcons, who will clear towards midfield. Again, trying to pick up Puerto Sorta, who will post up at midfield. Look for some help. Pass, though, is behind the run of Gillespie. And will go out for a Fairmont State throw. Reset now for Emily Wallen and the Falcons. Miara up the line for Kuzensky. Will be a Falcons throw. That was close to coming off of Miara, but she was out of bounds when the ball went over the stripe. Another throw coming for Fairmont State. Me 
Yara will once again do the job for the Falcons. Early ball off that right side. It's a promising one. Off her line comes Kennedy. She'll knock it out for a throw in under good pressure there as space had opened up there for a second for Fiaco Miser. Change coming for the Bobcats in the attacking end. It will be Kiwi Knotts, the midfielder from Clear Spring, Maryland, with a goal and two assists on the year coming on. Descent is throw in. Headed towards the top of the 18. Second ball fought for him. Looks like that might have been handled by Fairmont State. Definitely took a weird bounce off the body of Trisha Masters. It's a good win from Fairmont State, but taken right back. Cross in towards the penalty spot. First header won by Fairmont State, and then a volley blocked. So, long distance shot goes over. The initial volley was taken by Mortimer, the substitute. Then that one didn't get a weight over that one at all. It was almost like Frostburg State had too many options mm -hmm. in the box and had a difficult time figuring out which one was the best one. Lots of white shirts there. Uh, Fairmont State couldn't quite clear it out off after the first opportunity. And Frostburg State, again, a couple of different choices there, but the shot goes over the crossbar. Remains scoreless here with just over 11 minutes left here in this first half. Christensen can't find the Masters. Ball comes right for Gracie Smith. Long ball. Really nobody home on the attacking end for Fairmont State, but the second ball is won by the Falcons. Christensen. Space now for the Masters. Puerto Sorto. Lays it back for the Masters. But handled easily in the back there by Skylar Ehart. Falcons will try again. Again, Lamasters triggering. Going left this time, but the pass too soft. And now the counter is on. The outside back had come up. Miara to try and get that one. Now she has to hustle back and defend. Get some help though from Christensen. Kept alive though by DeSena. That pass just off the line. Unable to hook up there with Fiaco Miser. Yeah, Fairmont State's got to be better there. It, was, it tried to connect a 20-yard pass, and Frostburg State has just been super quick to the ball here. And it was another instance that uh, the Bobcats just weren't going to concede that pass. They were going to challenge it, take it, and started going the other way as we have a we'll substitute. Laura no. Shen will come on for Fairmont State. Redshirt junior from Cross Lanes, West Virginia. Master is making way and getting some instructions from assistant coach Emily Gallagher on the sideline. Burton. Good steal there. Puerto Sorto is fouled. Lots of moaning and groaning from the Fairmont State fans below yeah, us. I think they wanted a card in addition to the foul. Pretty tactical foul there. Yep. <laughs> we'll see it again. Yep. A really good job there. Good hustle effort. She kind of she lost her feet on her own. That's that's a foul, but yeah, it's definitely not a card. Yeah, there was you, you know sometimes you'll see those things, and especially on the replay, you see a little bit of jersey come yeah. with it or something, and nothing, not really, not on that one. Yeah. No, you're right. It just looked like such a good opportunity for Fairmont State that they lament uh, her going to the ground. Fiaco Miser trying to make speed? something happen on her own. Nearly did. Took three Fairmont senior defenders to knock her off her path. Yeah, great work from her. I mean, just really good speed with the ball at her feet. That's 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 difficult. You're talking about other, you know the Fairmont State defenders tracking back without the ball, and, and Fiaco Miser still able to get a little bit of a step here. Another sub 
Matty Allen coming on five foot seven forward, and maybe that's a move to say we're getting a lot of set pieces. Let's put a five foot seven player in to give us a little bit more of an option in the box. Cross end cleared. This will be a dangerous 50 50 header, won by Smith initially. Second ball also won by the Falcons, but now it falls into space. Chance for a shot is blocked. Good contribution there from Shen, who just came into the game to block that shot. Yeah, you said it. That was really good hustle there. Unable to be controlling that side by Puerto Sorto. You know, and she has she has put in a really good work rate, really good shift here. She's just not getting a ton of support um, as Fairmont State tries to get things forward. And again, if she's able to win that, that would be terrific for the Falcons. But there weren't a lot of players trailing that to try and get something going. So not faulting her effort at all in trying to uh, help Fairmont State, but right now it just doesn't seem like the Falcons are, are willing to commit to those sorts of uh, opportunities. Early cross in off a couple of bodies. Smith scissoring it clear. And so good ball as well to find Kuzinski on the left side. Looks for support. Puerto Suerto stumbles again. Fans wanted a foul, but she just slipped again. Yeah. Pure and simple. And that was tough. I think they'd like to have that ball start more centrally and then play mm -hmm. out wide. Well, and going back to what you were saying about committee numbers, I think that's why you see a Shin come in for a master. She's more of an attacking, creative player. You bring a Shin on, you just saw her work rate with that block shot. Maybe gives you a little bit more on the defensive end of that midfield. Yeah, and it's it's tough for Fairmont State because Frostburg's had so much of the ball that, uh, and they're so dynamic going forward. You you want to be, you, you know, you want to take your chances going forward when you have it. But if it's not clear, you can probably be a little bit conservative to not allow something go the other way. Terrell Kennedy's gotten a lot of practice with her goal kicks today in the first half. Takes another one towards the left side. Initial header won by Frostburg State and Mortimer. Slid away by Smith for the Falcons. That's a good, good step there by there, uh, by Smith. She's been excellent today on both ends. Served a beautiful corner kick that Kuzinski headed and forced a great save out of Ashley Bilger. The, the defensive work has been top notch as well. Yeah, it just it just again feels like Frostburg State has been maybe a half step to a full step faster mm -hmm. to Fairmont State in, in a lot of these instances. That's why you play for home field advantage at this point of the year, right? A lot of travel for Fairmont State from Friday to Sunday. Yeah, that's a tough turnaround regardless of travel playing Friday uh, with just a day rest, but that travel does does come into play. It's not a ter terrible bus trip from, from Fairmont to Frostburg for sure. Uh, but you're right. You know, you take all of the recovery you can, you can get. And if you don't have to factor in an hour and a half to two hour bus ride in it, you, you'd love to just be sleeping in your own bed, I guess, for an extra <laughs> bit of time. You know, one of the other things, too, is, is Fairmont State did not play a ton of players the other day against mm -hmm. West Virginia State. I think they just had one sub um, in that match. And so as we're talking about Frostburg being a little bit faster, using a little bit more player, uh, you know, using more players. Yeah, Tristan Bright gave LeMasters a 25-minute rest, and that was it. <laughs> Everybody else played 90. Yeah, and, and Frostburg State using more players. They had to play a little bit longer the other night, but uh, using more players to do it. Uh, again, it kind of comes into play, though, when you're talking about fatigue, maybe in the second half, and, and all of those things as uh, Bobcats have earned a corner here. Job done by Matty Allen there, one on two, to get the right angle for a deflection in a corner. Big moment here with under four minutes to go in the first half. Corner for Keeley Knotts. Righty ball in towards the top of the box. Headed in another good save that might have come off the post or the defender on the post. I think Chris, uh, no, that was not Christensen. That was uh, Smith on Smith the far post. Smith again. Yeah. Boy, just uh, three and a half minutes here as we take another look at this set opportunity. You see Smith standing there by the post. She gets her boot on it, sends it away. And it was Catherine Smith that got the header for Frostburg State. It was a really well-placed shot. 
Fairmont State here kind of trying to hold on here in these last few minutes of this first half as Frostburg State's notched up that pressure. And it'll be a foul whistled, and Fairmont State have a free kick, see if uh, the Falcons have anything drawn up here to try and steal a goal before the end of this first half. Coitro Sorto did well here against two defenders to hold that up and draw the foul. Yeah, she has, again, been active. She's been t difficult to deal with. She's drawn. Looks like Frostburg State's been whistled for three fouls. I, I'm not sure if she's been called for all of them or, you know, the foul. Uh, she's been fouled those three times, at least twice for sure, but she might have drawn all three. Gracie Smith will trigger this 35 yards from the goal for the Falcons. Three-player wall for Frostburg State in front of goalkeeper Ashley Bilger. Smith will shoot this one low off the wall. Did its job. Smith volleying it hopefully forward, but blocked again by Frostburg State's back three. Good touch up that left side to get Miyara loose, combining with Kuzinski. Tries the bending shot. Awkward angle for Bilger, but she covers it well. I think she wanted to cross that more so than shoot it, but the angle went towards Bilger in the goal. And Shin was lurking too if something went sideways there. She was on the far post. Just uh, closing in on 90 seconds here left in this first half. Kept alive on this right side. Keely Knotts whips a cross in, volleyed away. And a good job there as well from Christensen to take that from a corner kick to a throw in. Yep, that's not an easy play. It's a little play, but a really good job there by Christensen. You know, another first team all conference player. Out once again for a throw in for the Falcons deep. These kind of throw ins are tough, Adam, because if you can't get a clean touch like Fairmont State just did, you're immediately under pressure. Yeah, and we've seen Frostburg State is, is definitely going to challenge and press and try and win that ball back. Been really impressed by the will for Frostburg State here to try and win every 50-50 ball. Speaking of will, there's Kuzinski coming all the way back to win that header for the Falcons. Now they have a little bit of space here with 37 seconds left in the half. Early ball easily picked out, though, by Skylar Ehart. One last foray forward for the Bobcats here in the first half. Lots of space on this left side for a cross. It'll be played across by Maddie Allen. Cleared away by Christensen. Ten, nine, Allen getting a touch in. Five. One, two, and then a hopeful heave towards goal, trying to make something happen in the final seconds of this half. But it won't be enough. And Adam... First two chances of this game were the two best, one each way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it looked like we were going to go end-to-end -end here for the first 45 minutes as Fairmont State had the first best, uh, first great look off the set opportunity. Frostburg State came down and had a, had a great chance, two great saves. But after that, it really was Frostburg turning up the pressure, holding a lot of the ball, creating some opportunities. Uh, Fairmont State did a great job of hanging in there, some good defensive play. Um, you know, you can pick out a couple of players on that back line that have done really, really well. Kennedy has done well in her spot. So uh, at the end of the first half, we're still tied 0-0. Um, Frostburg State going to try and figure out how to break through and try to turn all that possession into shots into a goal. Fairmont State's got to have to get a little bit more of that ball going forward to try and find a goal here. Be back with halftime stats. Talk a little bit more about this one here from Frostburg, Maryland. Halftime in the Mountain East Conference Women's Soccer Championship game. Frostburg State 0, Fairmont State 0. Stay with us. We are there.
in life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. At Encova Insurance, we're committed to leaving a lasting impression in all communities we serve. We support local causes that mirror the values and interests of our associates, agents, and policyholders. We partner with organizations that are dedicated to improving lives. We are committed to building something greater than ourselves. Encircling our communities with strength and support, we are Encova Insurance. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the 12 proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Back at Bobcat Stadium in Frostburg, Maryland, Michael Menick alongside Adam Zundo. 0-0 zero, zero at the half, Adam, but it's been a good half, mostly in Frostburg's favor, 11-3 in shots right now. Yeah, you take a look at it, dominating the shots, and sometimes those stats can be a little mm -hmm. bit misleading. I think they do tell the story so far in this first 45 minutes. Fairmont State has the one shot, uh, has three shots, one of them on goal here as we take a look at some of the highlights here. Good job by Taylor Kennedy handling that. She's done a nice job. She has been called upon to make four saves in the first half, and she ha has done that. So, um, you know, again, you're looking at it. Fouls have been even four to four. It's been pretty clean in, in that regard. So, uh, you know, Frostburg State's been piling up those opportunities, 11 to three, like you mentioned, in shots. Um, and and uh, Fairmont State has got to find a way to generate a little bit more offense. The point you made in the first half is Fairmont State's not quite as deep. Only used one sub in the semifinal. Have only used one sub so far. And we saw it in the beginning of the game. They, they really surged their first five minutes, tried to get the quick goal, couldn't do it, and then had to come back and play defense a little bit. Yeah, it seems like there have been some moments where it looked like Fairmont State might be able to go forward. Go forward. We talk about, you know, Allie in the middle, number 15 for Fairmont State, doing a good job holding up play. But then there's not just been a lot of support going forward. So I'm, I'm going to look at that and maybe see how the Falcons can try to get some support going forward for her because she's done a lot of good things there for Fairmont State in the first 45. One good thing for Fairmont State as well, you, you've given up 11 shots. Fiaco Maz has only got one of those shots. Yeah, she has been so good in this tournament. She has uh, been a, a nightmare to deal with. And we see she only has that one shot, but she has been active for the Bobcats. So you definitely have to keep an eye on her. And here you take a great look at that save by Bilger. That was Fairmont State's best opportunity. It came in the early moments here in that first half. That's the only save that Ashley Bilger has had to make. Um, but it was a really good opportunity for Fairmont State. The Falcons would love to generate a couple of more set piece opportunities. Uh, they have two corner kicks. Frostburg State was able to pile up four in that one. So set opportunity for Fairmont State. So far the best chance at getting a goal. It was a header from Kiara Kuzinski. She had eight shots, six on going to the semifinal, just held to the one shot so far today. Yeah, the, again, she's not 100%. It doesn't look like uh, she missed the last time they played against uh, played Frostburg State. Um, but it, she had the ball out wide, and outside of that uh, moment and that uh, shot off the corner kick, she hasn't possessed the ball a ton. Would love to get her some more touches. Um, and, and, again, that's part of that support going forward that I think Fairmont State needs. I think defensively, you, you never want your goalkeeper to be the player of the game, but certainly Tara <laughs> Kennedy has been the player of the game for Fairmont State. Yes, yeah, again, four safe. She's done a terrific job. Uh, some good communication with that back line, trying to stop things before uh, they become a problem. She has been up to the task. And again, the two times that these teams have played, uh, Frostburg State has scored some bangers to beat Taylor Kennedy. One came on a penalty kick. One came from a 35-yard bullet. Um, another one was a chested down volley. So they've been really good goals that Frostburg scored against Fairmont State this season against Taylor Kennedy. But today, uh, she's been up to the task. So it's going to take a special effort to beat her. No goals to speak of so far in this one, Adam. We'll talk a little bit more about keys for the second half, talk a little bit more about this first half after the break. You're watching the MEC Women's Final. We'll be right back.
At Encova Insurance, we encircle you with insurance solutions you can trust. We provide coverage to protect what you care about. Business insurance, including workers' compensation, auto, home, and life insurance. What makes us unique? Our superior financial strength, smart technology, a one-stop shop for custom-tailored solutions. Encova 360, our approach to workers' compensation and local decision-making. We are Encova Insurance. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the 12 proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Welcome back to Bobcat Stadium in Frostburg, Maryland. Michael Minnick, Longton, Adam Sundle. Halftime here in the MEC Women's Championship game, Fairmont State, Frostburg State. And Adam, let's talk a little bit about the, the conference honors. A player that we're seeing today, Abby Dennis, the MEC Defensive Player of the Week defending. She had a great season. Yeah, co-defensive player of the year with Madison Hansen from Charleston. You're talking about two really good center backs. Uh, it's, it's tough to divide that award, but um, I think both players very deserving of it. Uh, Madison Hansen is a multiple, multi-time winner of that award. Uh, and Abby Dennis obviously had a great season with how good Frostburg State has been defensively to stand out. Uh, so a terrific job and a terrific season from her. Where we're now seeing today, the MEC Yawatsa part of the year, Fran Suarez Cupertino, what a campaign she had, 16 goals and a league best 10 assists. This league is so blessed with terrific forwards. You take a look at those uh, top goal scorers this year. You just mentioned uh, uh, Fran Suarez Cupertino, Kiera Kaczynski, a, a ton of goals this year. Um, Leah Foster, who's been just, I mean, she's been, she's listed as a graduate student. I feel like she's been there for 18 <laughs> years. She is a terrific player from Concord. Um, and then another player from West Virginia State, Esther Doramo. So uh, really blessed with terrific forwards in the league. And you're talking about a player who I think has been so good this season and we're seeing, here, seeing her here today. Tony Fiacco Miser, second team. Uh, that I think she is a terrific player, and I think that just speaks to the quality of talent in the Mountain East Conference in terms of goal scorers. Sydney Cavender, as well as second teamer from Charleston, former Winfield player, one of the best players in the state when she was in high school, and she's continued that at the college level. Yeah, and uh, again, it's 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 a terrific uh, honor to be named to any of the all conference teams. And we talked about uh, the major award winners. You mentioned the offensive player of the year. We talked about the defensive player of the year. Uh, the freshman of the year comes from Davis and Elkins. And let's talk about the coach of the year, who's on the sideline here today, Brian Parker from Frostburg State. Uh, just done a terrific job throughout his entire career here. We talked about the transition from Division three to Division two. Uh, so a terrific job by him. And and it, I think you know you, you can't. Yeah, you could probably try and find a co, but Cornell Borneo for Fairmont State done a terrific job in just his second season. Uh, another great year for the Falcons to lead them to the final um, here today and in, in contention for an NCAA tournament berth. Brian Parker, 258 wins in 21 years Jeez. at Frostburg State. So that, I mean, you're talking an average of what, about 12 or 13 wins a year in an 18, 19, 20 game season? Yeah, I'm not a math major, yeah. Michael, so I'm just going <laughs> to let, I'll leave that up to you. Pretty good. And then <laughs> both these teams we talked about in the first half hoping to be in the NCAA field. Frostburg State, you've got to feel good at 18-1-1. One, one. Fairmont State, 12-3-4, both with great records as they go up towards getting off the bubble and getting with an automatic bid today. Yeah, everybody would love to get that victory and not have to sweat on selection Monday, I believe, the selection. They might be tonight. I'll have to double-check on that. But uh, you don't want to sweat it whenever it is. And, and you're talking about uh, – you know, Frostburg State in that number two spot in the Atlantic region. West Virginia State uh, in the three spot. A terrific young program as well. Coach Mann did a great job there. They're in the conversation for an at-large bid despite losing in the semifinals. Bloomsburg is in the four spot from the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. I failed to mention Westchester is uh, in holding down the number one spot. They're ranked number two in the country. A really terrific team. Uh, cuts down as six. Uh, Gannon is five, Custown six, Concord seven, Fairmont State is eighth, and Mercy Hurst is ninth. I know a lot of Mountain East Conference, Conference fans are going to be watching that Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference final today between Westchester and Gannon. You have to think both of those teams are safely in the field. Mercy Hurst, though, is lurking at nine. They lost in the semifinal. Um, so, 
Still a lot to determine uh, in terms of that NCAA tournament field, but you can seal your fate today with a victory. Yeah, we're going to award a championship. Could take 45 minutes, could take 65, <laughs> could take 65 and penalty kicks. We'll find out here. Step aside one more time before the second half here in Frostburg. You're watching the ABC Women's Final. Stay with us. We are there for you to care for you at the health plan. We are here for you. We are there for you, to care for you, at the health plan, we are here for you. Welcome back to Bobcat Stadium, Michael Manick wants it, Adam Sundle. 45 minutes without a goal, we're about to play 45 more, and again, if we're still tied, it's different this year, it's not sudden victory, they'll play the overtime periods through, if it's still tied, we'll go to kicks from the mark. If it's not tied, then we have a champion. Yeah, it's an interesting rule here this year. Uh, you know, in regulation or in the regular season, uh, 90 minutes, you're tied. You, it's a draw. Um, in the postseason, though, you play the full 10-minute uh, overtime periods, but it's not golden goal. So you have to play it out for the full. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about all of these changes. You know. Um, I would be curious to see the data in terms of it, were there more draws. Cross towards the middle, flicked on just behind a run there as Frostbury State continues to pick up where they left off on the attacking end. Building here in possession and switching it towards the left side. It'll come through. Early shot across. Really nobody in white making the play, and it will be Kennedy coming over. I'm with you. I, I think <laughs> I like the fact that Overtime in the postseason is not golden goal. I like that. I like playing it out, especially in a final like this. I'm not a huge fan of not having overtime in the regular season, though. Yeah, but, you know, the, the, I see all sides of it, too. Mm -hmm. So, f first of all, I kind of like golden goal because of the drama yeah. to it. it. It definitely makes you hold your breath uh, a little bit. Um, I know it's probably not the most fair um, way to maybe play it out. I get that. Um, Frostburg State on the attack here. Crossing towards the middle again. Really nobody home in white to make that centering run. And Fairmont State will clear. Chested down there once again. Puerto Sorto kind of in that lone striker position. Holding things up. She's done well for the most part, but couldn't control that one as it came hard off of her face. Yeah. E. Hart for Frostburg State. Going left. Leela Clark with a cross. She had the winning assist Ooh. in the semifinal, nearly given away at the top of the box. Yeah, that was a uh, uh, couldn't quite clear it all the way out and almost really a lot of trouble. It was offside there. Offside by about five yards. <laughs> yeah. Not called, though. We'll play on. Guess because she didn't touch the ball. Yeah, I'm not sure if she took herself out of the play and they just kept the flag down. I don't know. I don't feel like she did, though. I mean, she, she pursued the defender, so I really don't feel like she just stood in place and let it go. She then pressured the ball. Throw in for Fairmont State, so it worked out well for the Falcons. We'll do it again up this left side. Once again, not putting a ton of numbers forward. Just five players in this attacking third right now. Throw in into the box. Handled there by Jessica Schneider. Early cross from Kruzanski towards the middle. Towards Smith, who's coming forward. She'll try and retrieve it in the corner. Does so. Plays it up the line, but doesn't get the deflection she hoped for off of Leela Clark, and it will be a goal kick. So just to continue and maybe put a, a period on the end of the thought about uh, overtime and, and, and those those things, uh, you know, the one good thing about not going to overtime in the regular season is the wear and tear that mm -hmm. these players have. You're talking about oftentimes, you know, a Thursday, Thursday, Sunday games, you're playing two games in a week, and you, those minutes pile up. Um, I know that the substitution rule in college makes it a little bit easier to manage those, but it's still a lot of wear and tear on these players. So from that standpoint, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a good thing, but we do like to, to try and play it out and try to get a, try to get a result. E. Hart has her pass broken up by Jessica Schneider for Fairmont State. Bob Katz will regroup. Uh, you know, another point about um, 
Frostburg State able to win that match in double overtime, they did not have to put any penalties on tape, mm -hmm. right? So if you're doing the scout and, you know, who knows the way that this goes, or even even in the next uh, in the NCAs, you'd rather not put your penalties on tape for a team to scout. Bobcats have taken seven this year, by the way. Falcons only one. One of those for Frostburg State was against Fairmont State. Out comes Kennedy to collect once again. She's going to roll this one. Working Jessica Schneider for Lamasters. A few times Fairmont State's been able to just link some passes in the back. Yeah, but here comes the pressure. Forced to play a little bit quick, more uh, quickly, and then obviously, and then all of a sudden, Frostburg State has the ball. So just a little bit of pressure from the Bobcats forces a quick play, and Bobcats get the ball back. Thought about the switch. This is again one of the, the things I like about the three-five-two is you can get that outside back in a position, which they nearly tried to do. Christensen clearing it out for Fairmont State. Throwing once again be left for Caroline Burton. Her arms are going to be pretty tired after this game. She's <laughs> taking a lot of throw-ins. Yeah, I usually think that you're going to run a 10K during a soccer match, and now all of a sudden you're tossing the ball in all the time. Adding some weight lifting to the – light weight lifting That's to the right. equation. This More reps, not weight, right? This is a good chip in as it was played by Skyler Ehart, but once again, Fairmont State's back four has done a nice job of cleaning things up for the most part. Can't spring a counter, though, as it's shipped towards the 18 and once again cleared by the Falcons. Throw for Carolyn DeSena, and Prosper State shall leave it for, guess who? <laughs> Caroline Burton to take the throwing. Christensen's header. Once again, stolen away by the Bobcats. Can they make something of this? It's a good, good switch. switch there to work in Ehart. Ehart will bring it up with her right foot. Angle left, play it to the top of the 18. Ehart will get it back again. First time cross, headed away. That's a good idea, though. A little bit of a variety of the attack. Yep. Chip towards the middle. Here's an opportunity for Frostburg State to cross in the shot. Is not cleanly hit by Maddie Allen. It was a good position for her to force Taylor Kennedy into the save. A yeah, good attack. We talked about the variety. We just saw it there a couple of different ways here for the Bobcats. We've touched on it throughout, but what are a couple of things these teams need to do as well or better in the second half to get the result they want? Well, I think for Fairmont State right now, its best opportunity came off a set piece, and you're going to try and, and build that attack and try to create more of those set opportunities. been tough in the run of play here for the Fighting Falcons. And if you're Frostburg State, I think you just got to keep knocking on the door, keep that pressure up and on. Uh, they've been using that variety of bodies. They've been able to press. They've been able to win the ball back and get those second balls. And it's, you know, at this point, it comes down to finishing. You have to be really sharp in that final third. That is not, that's not just something you go coach and say, hey, go, go be sharp in the final third, and then <laughs> all of a sudden you can do it. So I just think the, the, uh, if Frostburg State can continue to add up those opportunities, um, the Bobcats would have to feel good about maybe getting one of those through. More math for you, Frostburg State entering with 382 shots on the season in 20 games. So that's about 19 shots a game. They're ahead of that pace after taking 13 in the first half today. Or 11, excuse me. Puerto Sorto in the box. She'll fire that one wide. Again, just her option was to shoot it or cross just the one player that was up with her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that we continue to mention it in terms of the support. Just not a lot of options there for her. She's put in a terrific shift here today. She's worked really, really hard. Seen Kuczynski put a little bit deeper in this half, and it's been Ava Bear partnering Puerto Sorto up front, at least to start this half. Probably to get her on the ball more, Kuzinski, right? Just to get her some more touches where she can make something happen. Puerto Sorto can't turn. Again, well defended by Skyler Ehart. 
you know, what's interesting is that, you know, Kaczynski, you want her with the ball and, and trying to put the ball in the back of the net, but she might she might be served in that role that Puerto Sorto is in, mm -hmm. just kind of being, being a target. She can hold that up and have other players play off her, but right now that's Puerto Sorto's job. I wonder if that's also tied to her injury. I mean, you, that's going to be a lot of wear and tear as that center forward if you're having to face up and, and draw yeah, a lot of contact. Right, particularly against Abby Dennis. That's going to be a, a physical matchup. This is a good build up from the Bobcats on the right side. Left-footed cross comes in, headed away by Fairmont State. Catherine Smith goes left. Chance then to attack for Leela Clark. Cut out by... The Fighting Falcons and Gracie Smith. It will be a throw in. Crowd starting to get into it a little bit here, trying to urge squads on. Good representation from Fairmont State here as well. I think this is the time, too, as a player where you've gotten that first half out of the way, you've gotten the adrenaline of the first couple minutes, and now you kind of have a tendency to maybe get in a little bit of a lull because you know the last 150 minutes are going to be very intense and decide this game probably. Yeah, that's a good point. And when you're Fairmont State, especially when you've only used one substitute, you almost have to pace yourself to a certain extent. Yeah, it you know, it's, <laughs> it is an interesting thing here because you do uh, – there is something to, said, to be said for – being in the game for the full 90 minutes and finding that rhythm and finding your place in it. The college game is just so different. What mm -hmm. a, by the way, how about that boot there from, from Kennedy down the field? The college game is so different with all the substitutions that fresh bodies are a part of it. But again, I think it's not unreasonable to have players, you know, be in that full 90 and, and, and uh, be ready to play. That was a good square ball. Real good switch for Smith. 35 yards from goal. She's going to whip across in towards Puerto Sorto. It was a good ball headed away by Dennis. Second ball battled for. It'll go out. It will be a goal kick. Well shielded by Frostburg State. We'll see a change both ways. Bobcats will bring Desiree Mortimer back on. And we'll see Tristan Bright for the first time. Sophomore from Morgantown. She was their lone substitute in the semifinal. Her first action today. I think um, kind of in that play you saw it, and Frostburg State continues to be just a little bit quicker to the ball. As the Falcons yeah. maybe could have scrapped in that corner in that box, and just uh, Frostburg State was able to get there, control it, and let it let it go out and be fine with the uh, start things over the goal kick. I think what the Falcons were able to do to build that up, though, is what they should be doing, which is get just getting a little bit of possession because they do have – dynamic outside backs that they can get them involved they're going to have a better chance yeah and I like that switch to try and try and spread that Bobcat defense out cross in full extension from Kennedy she'll get a hand on it ball was ticketed to the far post as they tried to pick out the run there of Fiaco Miser Turn and ability to cross. It's a nice ball into the six, headed down by Fairmont State. Chance to shoot first time. And it comes in low from Caroline Burton, saved once again by Kennedy. I thought she might take that on the volley there. Decided to, to bring it low and placed it, but didn't really get a lot of power on it. No, but Frostburg State is again knocking on the door. We talked about it being a special kind of goal to try and beat Kennedy. And it was a good strike, but not just good enough to beat Taylor Kennedy. Bobcats are starting to find some width and some space on those wide areas. Yeah, you're right. Send, then sending those balls in and crossing. and Some good quality on those crosses as well. Make Kennedy move a little bit. Get her out of her preferred positions. And cause a little bit of problems for that back line for Frostburg State. And again, pressure forcing mm -hmm. Fairmont State to just hit it and hope in Frostburg State hit first time, but then given back to the Falcons. Bright dropping it for Emily Wallen. She'll take the space up the middle. Good work here to find Puerto Sorto. And that's where they love to find her. Mm -hmm. 
And then it's, again, it's, it's then what, right? Then what do you do with it? She has gotten the ball in some good spots today. Not a ton, but some good spots. And uh, just then after that, it just doesn't seem to materialize. Here's something up the middle for Frostburg State. Pushing forward is Hannah Thompson, but dispossessed well. Christensen fighting for it. Tackle there will continue to play. Knocked out for a throw in. I think it was Wallen that did a nice job stepping up to stop that Frostburg State attack. Rowie Miara is the player shaken up for Fairmont State. She'll continue. Just about a half hour left in regulation. It's a 0-0 game here in the MEC Championship game. Michael Minick and Adam Sundle here with you from Frostburg, Maryland, Bobcat Stadium. Beautiful fall day. I guess it's still fall if it's this warm. <laughs> Not winter yet in November. No, uh, we did lose the hour. Right. Or gain an hour, sorry. We lose the hour of daylight, essentially, in my... Yes. <laughs> uh, right. But uh, it's a terrific day here. Stoppage here. Warning to the Fairmont State bench. No card shown, just a warning. We haven't had a card at all in this game, actually. No, four fouls each, too. Yeah. Um, been pretty pretty well played. Pretty clean. No cards. Early ball in towards the middle. Hit her one by Christensen. Second ball. Picked up in midfield by Thompson for Frostburg State. Long shot here. Goes wide of Kennedy's goal. She had it covered all the way. And while we're talking about the weather and the conditions, the wind is blowing just a little bit from left to right on the screen. But also the sun is uh, directly, I would think, maybe not absolutely directly, but for Bilger on the opposite side, that is uh, Taylor Kennedy. On the other side, the sun is right in the Frostburg State keeper, Ashley Bilger's face. So that's something to contend with. Ooh, collision there and a hard one. Ooh, foul will go against Puerto Sorto in Fairmont State. Yeah, I'm sure if uh, Fairmont State bench was not pleased before, they're definitely not going to be pleased with this one. Abby Dennis gets hurt and then tries to pump up her fans after being fouled there. Free kick from Catherine Smith up the middle for the Bobcats. First ball won by Fairmont State. And once again, chance for Puerto Sorto to try to make something happen on her own, as usual. And most times in this game, Frostburg State's won the tackle. It looked like Fairmont State, though, was going was gonna to send some people had she been able to hold on to that. It looked like there were some Fairmont State players ready to go forward. It didn't materialize. So against maybe staying in that defensive posture, a little bit conservative. But they here like certainly is a chance to get some numbers for her to throw in in a good position about 40 yards from goal, 30 yards from goal. Yeah, and I think, you know, you trying for these more set opportunities have been tough in the run of play for Fairmont State. Puerto Sorto trying to win the corner. We'll get a throw in deep. And here's, again, where we talk about the sun maybe being a factor. Quibble about the spot of this throw in. Make Schneider go deeper. Drops to the feet of Puerto Sorto, who would try and turn on the end line. Gets the cross off. But well positioned at the near post was Bilger to scoop it up. First touch she's really had of the ball in a little while. <laughs> Getting back in the game. Giveaway in the back there. Cheap throw in for Fairmont State. Yeah, and you listen to that this crowd. Fairmont State's well represented. Excited about that. Puerto Sorto playing it across. Ooh. Just out of the path of the run forward from Jessica Schneider. The Falcons have found a little bit of life here in the last few minutes. Well, a few times Puerto Sorto's had a chance to kind of face and make a pass <laughs> rather than playing with her back. She played a good one. 
Yeah, that was a terrific ball. And the, the chances, quite honestly, for Fairmont State have been few and far between, but that was a really good one that just went uh, not able to get on the end of it there. Early ball off the right side. Chance to turn the corner and play it across. Fiaco Miser, righty ball in. First ball battled for in the box. Cross and dangerously bounces. Still loose at the top of the 18. Finally a whistle here and a foul against Frostburg State. So if you said a lull before, I think we're out of that lull, yes. right? <laughs> we have seen 20, it go. 25 to go, I think we are. Yeah. And we're going to get another look at that opportunity. Great run there from Fairmont State. And I think you saw Puerto Sorto try and play that across initially and kind of miss it. Missed it, And right. it messed up the timing, I yeah. think, of that run. Yeah, it was Gillespie, I think, that was giving chase to that, trying to get on the end of it. It's a good chance to launch a set piece for Frostburg State and Fairmont State, sensing that is putting 10 players within 40 yards, 30 yards of goal. Both teams have substitutes ready to go. Chance to serve this one for Abby Dennis. Towards the top of the 18. First ball won by Fairmont State, second ball won by the Falcons as well, and cut out by Emily Wallen. It'll stay in play, though, in the back for Frostburg State. Left it comes for Ehard, who serves some good balls in from that left wing. Combination there. It's a really good one to work it towards the corner. Christensen gets a foot Ooh. in and gives away the corner. Tried to get her body around that one and, and play it for a long throw, but it's going to end up being a corner kick here for Frostburg State as the subs are able to come onto the field here. Bear coming back on for Fairmont State. Keely Knotts. One of the changes for Frostburg State. Opportunity for Leela Clark to serve one in. Righty ball, and it's a really good win and headed out by Fairmont State. Kept alive by the Bobcats. Chested down and partially cleared by Schneider for the Falcons, and once again, they still... Not able to get that final touch through. Now we'll find Puerto Sortos the out. She heads it for herself into space. One on three. She runs towards the 18. Looking for some support. Still battling in the box. Cuts back nicely. Lays it off. Fall down in the box. No foul. I think that's the right no call there. But stolen right back. Tangle there. And that is a foul. That one is a foul. <laughs> Schneider. Tripped Oof. up. We got plenty of action here. Started with the set opportunity for Frostburg State. Cat Smith came crashing down, couldn't get on the end of it. And then Puerto Sorto is just uh, really difficult to handle. Beautiful ball <laughs> laid off there. And you see the contact, no call there. And then ultimately, Fairmont State, or Frostburg State does commit a foul and left with a free kick here for Fairmont State. Although, much to Fairmont State's chagrin, the sun has gone behind the clouds. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, not as much light in the face here as. Schneider addresses this free kick. That's right, because we could see it on the turf when the sun was out. The, the turf gets really kind of white. Service in. First ball battled for. Chance for Fairmont State, and it's blocked. Hands on the heads there. As Bear was, was a right. great chance for Bear, yeah. Yeah, she was right on the doorstep there. And Fairmont State has created a chance. Another great look at it here. Just wants to get that tap. Oh, good job defensively there. Frostburg State getting in the way of that one. I wasn't sure if Bear hit it real cleanly. She did, but then Frostburg State did a nice job getting in the middle of that to, to try and clear it away. I think it was May Hallman who just came into this game who blocked that shot. Welcome back to the lineup then, huh? Welcome back. You're going to make one of the biggest plays in the game so far. That was a great opportunity for Fairmont State. Now the Falcons... Been waiting for those opportunities to try and uh, come through. They have gotten a couple of good looks here in the last five, ten minutes. I think this is the template, right? As, as the team on the road, you, you kind of sit in and, and absorb and then take your opportunities when you can, and they've done that pretty well. 
Yeah, it, it, towards the end of the first half, it felt like Fairmont State was just kind of holding on, kicking balls away, trying to clear them away. And then uh, now really thinking that they can find one here, getting a little bit of confidence as the uh, about 20 minutes left in this one, a little over 21 minutes. Kuzinski working up that left side. Have to figure if they're going to score, she's going to be a part of it. Gets inside, takes the shot from deep. Great save once again from Bilger. Kuzinski had that ticketed for the corner. Bilger said no. <laughs> you almost called your shot there. Yes. Kiera Kuzinski just fires one. Great one-on-one -on -one win offensively. You see that brace on her knee. Strikes it. Looks kind of innocent, but that thing is going to goal. And Bilger makes the save. And really luckily for Frostburg State, it stayed in play and was a deep throw rather than a corner. I said Bilger hadn't been too busy for a while. <laughs> She's been very busy the last five or ten minutes. Yeah, and, and the quality of defensive play and goalkeeping that we've seen here today, uh, you know, just it's going to take, uh, I think, again, a special moment to try and break through. Either that or something really kind of weird and wacky. Right, not just saves, but blocks. A lot of really vital blocks both ways. Yeah, we've seen players sell out. And Puerto Sorto in a great position, tried to sneak it in near post. Bilger was there. I like the early shot. Yeah, and she didn't have a ton of op uh, mm -hmm. options, quite honestly. Again, Fairmont State didn't have a ton of people in the box, but a really good early shot. Bilger falls on it, makes the save. Drama building in this MEC final between Frostburg State and Fairmont State. An automatic bid on the line. Both teams trying to cement their spots in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and this is, this is fun, and we were kind of talking in the open, and who needs it more, who needs it more. Well, both teams really want it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, it's not like, well, Frostburg State's number two in the Atlantic region. They'll be content with whatever. Bobcats trying to win a trophy here. Falcons trying to win a trophy here, and that's, you know, it's just a lot of fun to watch two teams that are doing everything they can to try and get a victory here. Space in midfield for Fairmont State. This bear had dropped it back. Christensen now. Gracie Smith will take the space, play an early ball in. Handled very cleanly by Abby Dennis. She'll work it left. Runs out of space, though, with the pass. You know, and I thought that was a good job by Fairmont State in trying to build up. Maybe that's a little bit of an adjustment, playing it forward and then playing it back maybe uh, kind of a little bit wider, creating some space, creating some, some movement forward. Uh, we didn't see a lot of that in the first half. Throw for the Falcons. Talked about the changes for overtime. This is almost like an overtime scenario right now where you've got about 20 minutes left. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, and, and yeah, exactly. It would, it's a similar situation, right, because you'd have to play it out. It doesn't, it's not a golden goal, but it might feel like it. But the way that this one has gone in terms of how good the keepers have been, uh, how, how you know defensive-minded and, and a good job by both back lines of, of stopping some opportunities, um, you certainly think that uh, one might be enough. Something else we should note ahead of this game, should it go to overtime or a shootout, is any player on the game day roster can take a penalty. You don't have to be on the field. So you have to wonder if maybe these teams have some specialists that are going to be considering and thinking for a while on the bench about maybe their big moment in the sun here. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I think I was talking to Coach Parker before the game, and he said, oh, I asked him a little bit about PKs. I didn't want to get too into it. I knew coaches are <laughs> uh, don't want to. He said for his entire career, he's about, he's about 500 in penalties. And that seems about yeah. right, right? <laughs> Everybody calls it a coin toss or a 50-50 proposition. So for him to uh, be about 50-50 or 500 for his, uh, for his career seems, uh, seems pretty fitting. Well, we saw the MLS shootout last night. Even the, even the best Ooh. best in the world and the best of the best, sometimes you can't make a kick when That's the game's a, on the line. I know. I, well, that, was, well, that was an entertaining matchup, huh? Former West Virginia defender Jack Elliott scoring a brace. Big time. First MLS Cup brace in 18 years. Good save there once again from Kennedy. Yeah, she is... Uh, Tossed the ball a couple of times here in terms of uh, her distribution. 
Can we naturalize Jack Elliott soon? Is that <laughs> sit a couple years in Morgantown, a yeah. couple years in Philly? Can we can we get him would in the like, pool for Greg Berhalter, I was please? Say, would you like him in the Stars and Stripes? Is a foul's whistled there on on Frostburg State. Be a free kick now for the Falcons. Take a look at the contact there. That one's whistled. Wallen's service headed on nicely. Bear got the head on it, but Kuzinski and her strike partner, Puerto Sorto, not in the area. It will be a goal kick in the end. More changes. Shin coming back in for Fairmont State. And a re-entry as well for Hannah Thompson for Frostburg State. Breaks to come for Will Masters for the Falcons. And Burton for the Bobcats. Who's gonna take the throw-ins now for Frostburg State? <laughs> fresh arms in the fresh arms in the game, right? <laughs> Is that what you say? Get somebody up in the bullpen to throw. Uh-huh. Christensen. Turned over. Early ball cut out though. By the left back Miara, who's been okay after taking some contact a few minutes ago. Puerto Sorto turning, creating some space for herself, taking the shot from deep, but a one hopper to Bilger. Optimistic there, and she has just been a workhorse up there for Fairmont State, firing that one from about 30, it looked like. And it's, uh, it's going to, again, I think it's going to take something special. And uh, she certainly looks like she has the ability to, to do that. Shots were 11 3 at the half. It's been 4 3 in favor of Fairmont State in the second half. Yeah, it's definitely evened out here in the second 45 for a long period of time in that first half. And even a little bit at the second half, Frostburg State felt like they were building to, and building and building toward a, toward a goal. And now it seems like Fairmont State is, is building a little bit more towards one. Hammond. Turned wide by the Bobcats. Hallman gets it back. Goes down, no call. Footsteps arriving, forcing the pass back to Bilger. So the, the great pressure there by Puerto Sorto. And you turnover oh. now, and a chance two on two for Fairmont State. Puerto Sorto was in an offside position though. She's recovered, back on the ball at the edge of the 18. Right footed shot is blocked. You were saying? <laughs> uh, well, I was just going to say that Fremont State didn't have a lot of other uh, players pressuring, and then all of a sudden, the one other player other than Puerto Sorto who was pressuring is just given the ball. That was Mackenzie Gillespie. And so, and so, really, if you're, if, if you're Fremont State and you're going to press, you know, you would like to have more players forward. So, if you force the goalkeeper to make a quick play, or force the defender to make a quick play, that you have players there to try and intercept the ball. Fremont State, quite honestly, didn't have numbers, but was in the right spot to, to intercept and try and go forward. Well, and like I said, unlucky that Puerto Sorto was about and three offside. yards offside, yeah. and mm -hmm. it really was just a one-person operation for Mackenzie Gillespie there for a minute. Puerto Sorto has done so well in this role right here, just holding up the ball, yep. finding help now. As Fairmont State has been able to put some numbers forward, but then easily turned over. Yeah, a little slow going forward, I think. Not a little unsure what the next play would be. Allowed Frostburg State to recover and win it back. It's a good touch here from Gillespie. Working towards the 18 on her right foot. Cutting into the box. It's Kuzinski now actually with the shot that hit the football upright. Now the Fighting Falcons waited a little bit, but they have found their way into this match for sure. Putting pressure on Frostburg State here in the last 20 minutes or so. Trying to find a goal. Not a, not a true golden goal situation. We've talked about it. As you have another look at Kaczynski's shot going over the crossbar. But you again, these are the moments now where you feel like it's, it's, uh, if you find one, you, it, could be, it could stand up. Bobcats were able to rest. Fiaco, Miser, and Clark, they're both back in the game now. Trying to change it. And change the momentum, really. Because it's been Fairmont State on the front foot for the most part. Mm-hmm. The last 15 minutes especially. Christensen towards midfield. Brought down by Gillespie. The chip off the mark though. It will be a throw in for the Bobcats here in the final 12 minutes of regulation. Again, if it's tied after 90, we'll play two 10-minute periods. It's not sudden victory. We'll play the full 20. 
If it's still tied, we'll go to kicks from the mark to decide the MEC champion. Path to the championship. A couple of shutouts for Frostburg State. 4 nothing over Wheeling in the first round. And then one nothing over Charleston. And then for Fairmont State, took down Notre Dame one nothing, And then with the upset over 22nd ranked West Virginia State, one nothing as well. It may look like we have another substitute here. Burton back on, just in time for a throw in. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we talked about it in the open, Adam. Both these teams, not strangers to drama. Both of them in the semifinals getting late goals to punch their tickets here to Frostburg. Yeah, this one's, uh, I'd say this one is going to be dramatic no matter what happens. Um, if, if we find a goal, it's going to be in a dramatic situation. If we go to penalties, those are always pressure filled. Hallman, cut inside from Fiaco Miser, knocked out for a throw in, quickly taken. Fiaco Miser's pass blocked. Hallman, turn from Alonzo, who after a busy first half has not had much of the ball in the second half, cleared. Step and win for the Bobcats, for Abby Dennis. Battle at the top of the box, opening now potentially for Fiaco Miser, but well defended by Fairmont State and knocked out for a throw in. Well, I talked about something wacky. The spin on that ball yeah. and that turf really lunged it forward. Early cross, headed down, cleared. Only as far as the top of the box off Smith. And then that got cleanly through, which... <laughs> Odds are that would not get cleanly through with all the bodies in traffic, and Kennedy will make the play. Well, this is uh, a lot of fun, fun from our vantage mm -hmm. point. Two teams going at it, trying to find that goal. No one's settling in. No one is content with the score line. So this is um, you know a, a lot of fun to see these two teams trying to trying to get a result, playing really hard uh, with great effort, great skill. So it's 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 been a it's been a fun final. You know, it, it always drives me crazy when people go, oh, you know, zero zero. You know, this has been <laughs> a really exciting uh, scoreless game. I think the tone was set by both teams in the first five minutes. Both teams got great opportunities yeah. and nearly broke the deadlock. Yeah, and I mean, let's be fair. There were some moments here in this one that that you know you called it a lull a little bit. I think that's probably fair. Um, but there have been a lot of really exciting and skillful moments uh, that definitely outweigh that. Hamann. Space now in the midfield for Caroline Burton. Turn at the top of the 18, first time shot, easily handled by Kennedy. All right, let's buckle up. We got eight and a half, we got <laughs> eight and eight and a half, half minutes go. here in, in regulation. We've seen some end-to-end -end action, good opportunities for both sides. Someone's going to be a hero. Someone is going to be a hero. I love it. Who's it going to be? Someone's got an opportunity to... Notch history. Neither one of these teams has won a conference tournament championship. Both teams have made it to a final before. Frostburg played in the final actually last year against Concord. Mountain Lions had things going, made it all the way to the Elite Eight last year. So a really good squad, not able to get a result against um, Concord. And Fairmont State actually lost to Concord a couple of years ago in a final as well, if you sense that theme. Um, as uh, Coach uh, Luke Duffy's done a great job for the Mountain Lion program. Here's a big moment. Corner kick for Frostburg State. You know, my, uh, Michael, uh, they're all big now, right? I mean, you're gonna, you can continue to use that phrase here down the stretch. Corner served in, headed down, volleyed towards the end line, headed off the line by Smith, headed again by Kuzinski. Still alive for Frostburg State. Play towards the top of the 18. Chance to step and shoot. Slid into the six and watched out there by Gracie Smith, who made two big Ooh. plays on that set piece. Again, you can exhale. I don't care which, time, which team you're rooting for. You're holding your breath, really. 
Um, Kat Smith was just standing there waiting for that ball to come off the corner. Uh, she did a nice job uh, of getting there, but I think Fairmont State's got to pay closer attention to her on those set opportunities. And you know, a really clever touch from Fioko Miser. It didn't end up leading to a goal, but really tricky idea. Try and flick it over her head and see what was happening on the on the far post. But uh, again, at the end of the day, we're still knotted at zero. Six and a half minutes left. Both teams wanting that throw in. It will go the way of Gracie Smith and Fairmont State here. Will Masters, who just came back in the game, possessing in midfield. For Christensen. Opened up left now for Rowie Miara. Up the line, the pass is blocked. Space now in the center of the park for Desiree Mortimer. Good ball outside for Osbergs dead unlocking the defense. Can they get a shot off? They can, but Kennedy makes the catch. Well, I think Fairmont State caught a break there. Really yeah. didn't get back as, as Frostburg State had the numbers going forward. And not a, pretty easy, quite honestly, to lay it out wide with not a lot of pressure. And uh, I think Fairmont State lucky nothing came of it. Fiaco Miser kind of switching sides there and popping up on the right and getting herself in a good position. Yeah, Coach Parker was telling me he, he likes those two up front because they can be interchangeable. They can go to either side. It's a little bit more unpredictable. Um, you know, when, when you have a three front, you can you kind of get settled into those roles sometimes, middle, left, and right. And with those two, you can kind of overlap and change things uh, a little bit and be a little bit more unpredictable. Schneider's done really well to stay on the ball here. Finally does draw contact and finally a foul. As she, a uh, li little bit of a late whistle there. I mm -hmm. thought, uh, I'm not sure if, if the ref was waiting for possession, even though she was uh, knocked to the ground, but uh, the call eventually came. Chance for Emily Wallen, sophomore from Brighton, Michigan, to launch one forward here. The final five minutes of the MEC women's final in regulation. Served in towards the top of the 18. First ball won by the Bobcats. Second ball hustled for as it was Schneider getting a touch. Goes clean through. And we'll see the change now for the Bobcats. Back on comes Hannah Thomason with her three goals and one assist on the year. A good shift from Carly Gillette who comes off. Turned over. Solid tackle there in midfield from Gillespie for Fairmont State. Return ball needs to come, and it will, to that left wing. Working towards the 18, Gillespie. Cross is blocked. Whips it in again. First ball cleared away. Puerto Sorto collects for the Falcons. Plays it square. Kuzensky tees up the left foot, takes the shot. And Bilger will corral that one. That was good from Fairmont State. Patient, I think mm -hmm. maybe even just a little bit too patient there as Kaczynski was calling for the ball yeah. at her foot. Came, eventually came, but I think she wanted a little bit sooner because she was, she was just standing there for a while, unmarked, no one around her, and, and was wanting it. Had to hit it a little bit flat-footed, which is why she didn't get her normal kind of power on it. Back comes Frostburg State. Deft touch there from Mortimer. Left it comes now for Clark. Back for Mortimer. In the box. Beats one. Plays it square. Turned around. Now it's Thompson whipping the shot. Off a defender. Still loose in the box. Queer more definitively this time by Emily Wallen. But kept alive by the Bobcats. They'll cross it in towards the middle. And a catch for Taylor Kennedy. I'm surprised Fairmont State playing quickly. I thought Kennedy actually might just fall down, take her 10 seconds and, and play on, but Fairmont State playing quickly. Puerto Sorto. Pass blocked up the line. It works for the Falcons, but I agree with you. Didn't have a lot of numbers forward. Well, there's no more golden goal, but this is basically golden yeah, goal at this much point. The rest of the way, really. Unless you have an early goal, and if it were to go to overtime and somebody were to get a goal in the first minute, might not feel quite the same, but certainly right now it feels like it, and but this has been, uh, I mean, it's just been a real treat, quite honestly. It's been a lot of fun to watch these two teams go at it. And, and, and it's just been a, a lot of fun watching this competition. You love it when a trophy's on the line. 
<laughs> Somehow that ball stayed in. And that's, and you know, Kaczynski's going to get that foul. It's not a terrible foul, no. really. Um, you know, yeah. you're wasting time. You're, you're taking some time off the clock, which is good. You don't want to give a, a, you know, this, not a, from this distance, it's really difficult to be a set opportunity. But you don't, you don't like to concede that. But at the same time, you're going to waste or take 20, 25 seconds off the clock. Hallman will trigger it for the Bobcats. Flies in towards the penalty spot. First header won by Fairmont State. Second ball will be volleyed back in the mixer. Cleared again by the Falcons. It was Wallen doing the job there. Knocked right back in. Cut away by Lamasters. Now Kaczynski will take her time with a minute 13 left. Pass is blocked. Nice job, really, off the bench from Hallman. She's made some key plays for Frostburg State. On the ball now. Good switch. Knocked forward. Christensen with a bit of a miss hit there. She'll recover and knock it out for a throw in with under a minute to go in regulation in the MEC final. Frostburg State looking for a late winner. Comes wide right. Cross in. Bounces in the box and is cleared, but only partially. Second shot here blocked again and cleared partially by Wallen. And finally, the pressure's released a little bit by the Falcons with 30 seconds left. Ooh, a little bit of miscommunication there on who was going to handle that ball in the box. Fairmont State, again, avoids disaster. They're going to put 10 behind the ball here and just hang on. Uh, yeah. Serve up the right side, header one by Christensen. That's a good play to knock it out for a you know, throw-in. Sorry, and you know that what's difficult about that is this turf does provide, I mean, all turfs, not this turf in particular, does provide some weird bounces. Another weird one comes in. Kennedy will hold on for dear life and then punt out the final seconds of this one. We are headed to extra time in the Mountain East Conference Women's Championship game, Adam. Whew. Well, that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, really t good opportunities for both teams. Uh, it, coming down the stretch, vying to get that one goal to try and find one. But uh, it's, I think at the end of the day, Frostburg State had the better of the play in the first half. Fairmont State really found its way in that second half. Fair to be 0-0 as we go to overtime. I think both teams have to be really good about the way they're playing right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of hard to, hard to fault anyone because you get a chance on one end, chance on the other end. Um, and so, yeah, I don't feel like anybody has uh, given, much, given much and a lot to hang their heads about. Uh, a lot of positive momentum really for both teams, which is kind of a weird spot to be. Sometimes you feel like it's a tug of war and some, one side's got a little bit more of it than the other side. And they've just gone back and forth. So once again... We're going to play these two 10-minute periods no matter what. There is no golden goal anymore. So we'll take a small break here, play 10, smaller break, play 10 more, and then if we're still tied, kicks from the mark in Frostburg. Stay with us here for the final drama of this one. You're watching the MEC Women's Final. We are there for you to care for you at the health plan. We are here for you. Things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. 
It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. At Encova Insurance, we're committed to leaving a lasting impression in all communities we serve. We support local causes that mirror the values and interests of our associates, agents, and policyholders. We partner with organizations that are dedicated to improving lives. We are committed to building something greater than ourselves. Encircling our communities with strength and support, we are Encova Insurance. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the 12 proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Welcome back to Bobcat Stadium in Frostburg, Maryland. Michael Medeglon said Adam Zunder. We're going to play extra time to determine the Mountain East Conference Women's Champion. Fairmont State and Frostburg State have battled this whole way, Adam. It's been a really good match to watch. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I think we mentioned it at the end of regulation there. It's, uh, you know, there was some give and take here. We're going to watch a couple of the highlights. There's Kira Kaczynski sending that ball just over the crossbar. She's gotten a couple more touches in the second half, which has been really critical for Fairmont State. And, uh, you know, we talk about some of the substitutions, and, and Frostburg State has played more players than Fairmont State so far. Fairmont State with just two subs in this one, Frostburg State with five or six. Um, so that's been a uh, key. It could be a key here down the stretch as we play a couple of overtimes. Again, 20 guaranteed minutes here um, in this overtime session to try and find a winner. Stats through 90 minutes. The shots are 19-11 in favor of Frostburg State, but it was 11-3 to at the half. Like you said, a much more even second half, literally in this case 8-8. Eight to eight. Shots on goal, nine for Frostburg State, five for Fairmont State. Bobcats have also at the edge and corner kicks, six to two. But I feel like the two that F Fairmont State had <laughs> were more dangerous, except for maybe the last one that Frostburg State had. Underway here in the first overtime, Kuzinski with an early touch for the Falcons, playing it for Bear, who had a good look in the second half. Yeah, and, and more than, than shots, and this is you know what, why I think you know it's helpful. To, to be able to talk about this is scoring opportunities. And so Fairmont State had so many more uh, scoring opportunities here in that second half. And yeah, the shots were, were, were even, which is, a, you know, technically that's, that's right. But I think the scoring opportunities increased dramatically for Fairmont State. I mean, we saw the one in the first half and that was really mm -hmm. it for the Fighting Falcons um, for that first 45. And then just a lot more opportunities than that second 45 to try, try and uh, grab a goal. But not to be outdone, I mean, Frostburg State, in those final five minutes or, or so, uh, definitely had some chances to bury one themselves. Throwing coming for Fairmont State. And this is something we saw in the last couple of minutes of the second half, Adam, where it seemed like Puerto Sorto was playing a little bit deeper than just being that lone forward. She's been more of a winger in the last five or 10 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. She, you know, for the most part, she was standing as a, you know, seemed like a single striker trying to hold things up back to goal. She has played a little bit further back. Now she's on the outside. She's got great speed as well, in addition to being able to hold up the ball. So trying to find a little bit something different for her, give Frostburg State a little bit of a different look. Trying to get a touch there around the defender and commits the foul. And you had mentioned it in the second half, Adam, maybe getting Kuczynski a little bit more central. She's moved a little bit more central. Yep. as that move has been made. Yep, I think that's, uh, you know, and again, we're talking about a Kaczynski who's been uh, not 100% um, and played the full, she played the full 90 here, I believe. And so yeah. um, 
you'd have to think that maybe trying to make her workload a little bit more manageable here has to be a key. And, and she's a big, strong player as well. Um, so I'm certain that she has the, the technical skills to be to do a lot of, of what Puerto Sorto can do. What Puerto Sorto could do at add was that kind of speed dynamic after winning the ball, you know, a little bit and, and play off it. So she plays it wide and then she can kind of go to goal, a little bit of give and goal situation. I don't think you have that quite as much with Kaczynski right now with, uh, uh, you know, not being 100%. Kaczynski turning nicely there. Puerto Sorto is available in space on the left. She'll use her. Something brewing here for the Falcons on the left side. Puerto Sorto towards the 18 on her right foot. Plays it across. Cleared away. Heavy touch from Masters. She fights and gets the deflection back. This time the clearance comes across midfield. Sun playing all kinds of tricks here <laughs> on us here in the booth. It's, the, it's gone from a, a clear day to a yeah. partly cloudy day as this match has gone on but still nice and warm. You wouldn't think that say. you'd have to say, you know, I hope the players are hydrating here in, in middle of November, <laughs> but it's been really warm. Well, and sometimes a dark cloud in Frostburg in November means it's about to snow about that's, six inches. Well, I would say most of the time yeah. that's been the case. And we'll call it Frostburg for a reason, right? DeSena up the right side. Cross blocked. It'll be a second try for Mortimer and behind her target this time. She tried to pick out DeSena. Thompson, long shot, always going wide off the right foot of Hamann, who stayed in this game. She didn't start this match, but she played a lot of the second half in the back, and, and I thought played well. Yeah, she's been a really good player for Frostburg State, playing important minutes. I always kind of laugh about basketball, like who's starting, who's starting, mm -hmm. I, who finishes. Right. Right. Who, who's the, who are the final five in basketball that are going to finish the game? Who are the final 11 that are going to finish the game? Uh, and if you're curious about the substitution in college soccer, it, the first overtime mirrors the first half, second overtime mirrors the second half. Meaning you can't re-enter in the first overtime, you can re-enter once in the second overtime. Correct. And a lot of that's strategic too, where maybe you start a player in the first overtime that you want to use for three or four minutes and give your starter extended rest. Yep. It, you know, the, the substitution, it's, fu it's funny because when you only have three in the international game, like you have to be really strategic about that. And I, you lose a little bit of that uh, strategy. Frostburg State building now. Really good counterattack here. Chance now to shoot. And it goes into the... Gloves of Kennedy on one step from Hannah Thompson. Uh, but just to finish that thought, you lose a little bit, I think, of that strategy with as many substitutions as you get. But where, where you substitute players, again, like you're talking about, do you take them through the half? Um, Coach uh, Dan Strafford at WVU sometimes subs in the final 15 minutes, keeps that same squad on mm -hmm. for the start of the second half to, you know, to give a full, you get a little bit more of the rhythm of the game despite be, halftime being in. So there's a lot of different um, ways to kind of go about that. Space now on the left side for the Bobcats to attack. Played centrally. Shot is a little bit weak. Forcing Kennedy to dive to her left. Temp there coming forward from Fioko Miser. Wait, Fioko I, Miser. I think she had a little bit more time than yeah. she thought she did. And so she got it off her boot really quickly. I think she had a moment. She's probably not used to having that much time. No, not today for sure. Early cross in towards Mortimer, headed away by Christensen for Fairmont State. One in midfield now for the Falcons by Schneider. Can't find a teammate, though, and the Bobcats will regroup on the left side. Smith step for step defending that one. It goes out for a throw in deep on the attack from Catherine Smith. Smith against Smith. And once again, Caroline Burton over to take the throw in. Or at least to show, yeah, she's going to take it. Taking the reins from Leela Clark. Throw towards Mortimer. Gets through the first set of bodies. Not a clear clearance there, but at least enough to disrupt the play. Catherine Smith will tee one up. Cross in towards the six. Deflected. Dangerous chance here. Headed down by Gracie Smith, who's shaken up on the play. Still loose and blasted over the bar. I tell you what, Gracie Smith has put her body on the line a couple of times today, and she did that again. She is slow to get up. 
But uh, you talk about a player uh, really selling out. She heads it down first. That's a big time play there to keep Fiaco Miser at bay. It's a really good cross from Catherine Smith to make that happen. Yeah, she's uh, pounced forward a couple of times. We've seen her on some set pieces, but dangerous. As uh, Clocks throws in with 2.58 left as they tend to Gracie Smith. Yeah, I mean, you think you think she wants to win? I mean, a lot everybody here wants to win, obviously, but you just see, you know, the, the effort that she just gave in that one. And I'm sure she does not want to leave this match. I'm certain of that. You see the pain in her face. Yeah, absolutely. But this is where I, I like the college re-entry because yeah. she's such an important player. If you can treat her for a couple minutes, potentially get her back in the start of the second overtime, you're in a much better position than you would if you had to sub her out. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, Coach Parker, I'm sure, is watching this now because if she has to come off the field, that really changes the dynamic there. She's been really, really good today. Um, and I would imagine that uh, – you know, if, if if she has to come out of this game, that uh, that uh, Frostburg State's attack will probably try and uh, try and go towards that same space on the field. Falcons are going to bring Shin on. Smith will come off, and then at the next stoppage, Tristan Bright will come on. They're allowing the substitution for the injury, but not the regular substitution. So we'll see how that changes the complexion of this back one, whether Shin will slide in at that outside back position or whether she'll move somebody back. Yeah, it looks like she is right now positioned mm -hmm. in that outside back spot. So. Outside backs are, I think, one of the hardest things to find in the game. You know, you got to have a, tr you got to, you got to love defending. And I, uh, you know, Coach Sasha Sarovsky at the University of Maryland you know, said if you're going to be a defender, you have to love defending first. Everyone wants to go forward, score goals, send those call balls across, all those things. But you have to love to defend. Good to see Gracie Smith's ready to come back into this game. Of course, she won't be able to substitute in the first overtime. But she's ready when the time comes. I think that's because of the medical nature of it. She's allowed to reenter. That was discussing that right well, now. Yeah, I think it's that same. No, you're right. You were yep. right, Michael. She's not able to come in. I thought maybe because of the... But it wasn't, a, I think, uh, good communication there by the officials to make sure. If it had been her head, maybe right. they would have let her re-enter. But That's since right. it was a lower body injury, maybe not. That's right. And I think that discussion is happening right now between fourth official and Coach Borneo. Easy stuff for Kennedy. Two minutes left. These overtimes always fly past, in my opinion. Yeah. You blink, and it's just a minute or two left on the clock. You know, I think that uh, this first overtime's looked a lot like the first half. Mm -hmm. You know, Frostburg State's gotten a little bit better to the play and created some opportunities. Throw in for Kuzinski. Fairmont State tries to build some momentum here. Doesn't like her options, and she'll just drop it and let Gillespie come up and take it. Excuse me, that's actually uh, Rowie Miara taking it. Turned inside by Puerto Sorto. Drop back for La Masters. Christensen. Turn now from Bear. Drop back again for Christensen. Patience here from Fairmont State. Ball towards the middle from Christensen. Flicked on, but nobody home to pick up that on the other side except for Ashley Bilger, the Frostburg State goalkeeper. Under a minute in the first Extra period, again, we'll play 10 more minutes no matter what happens. And then if we're still tied, five for each from the penalty spot. And then more if it's still tied. <laughs> I'm ready to see both these goalkeepers face a penalty shootout myself. Both have played really well. But it might not matter. Chance inside. Shot is blocked. Second shot is right at Kennedy. That was ripped. Great job by Taylor Kennedy to be in the right spot. That is uh, goalkeeping. It's it's uh, at its finest. It's not just making a terrific athletic save. It's being in the right spot because that one was hit like a rocket. But she was right there to make that save. Hannah Thompson had the shot. Puerto Sorto gets a foot in. We'll play on. 
Space now for her to attack alongside Trisha LaMasters. Puerto Sorto towards the middle. Last kick of this first overtime period is a blocked shot. And we'll head to a second OT, Adam. Whew. Again, we've, we have not, we've been short on goals, but not short on excitement. Mm -hmm. As we have a Frostburg player shaken up, I think, taking that ball as Puerto Sorto gave it a shot. And they have another look at it. In the, this, is, uh, this is the scoring opportunity for Frostburg State. And again, look at Kennedy getting this right spot, hanging on that near post, right spot. All she got to do is get her body in the way to make that save. Big time save there to keep this score tied at zero. It was Mortimer with the first look, Thompson with the second look, and that's as close as either team's gotten in this game. Yeah, it was about as good a strike and as good a spot. I mean, it was, that, was, that was that kind of scramble stuff that happens that can lead to a goal. But uh, at the end of the first overtime session, still scoreless. Step aside for just a second here. Come back with a second OT again. Ten minutes no matter what. If it's still tied, we go to kicks from the mark. You're watching the MEC Women's Final. What a game it's been here in Frostburg. Stay with us. Life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. We are there for you, to care for you at the health plan. We are here for you. We are there for you, to care for you at the health plan. We are here for you. Welcome back to Bobcat Stadium. We're gearing up for the second overtime period between Fairmont State and Frostburg State for the Mountaineers Conference Championship. Michael Minnick on said Adam Zundel. Deep breath here for both teams before this play resumes. Yeah, this is uh, full of, of excitement and drama and, and good scoring opportunities. You know, again, just to kind of recap, Frostburg State really, I think, controlled that first half, started the second half, and then Fairmont State really – started to find its way there towards the latter part of that second half and creating a lot of good opportunities. And then in the first half, or in the first overtime, it seemed a little bit like the, same, <laughs> like the same story. Frostburg State controlled it. Fairmont State had some opportunities. and then, But I think Frostburg State with the last good chance there in that first overtime, um, setting things up here for another 10 minutes. Reminds you again that Fiaco Miser scored in the second overtime of the semifinal to get Frostburg State to this final. She'll hope history repeats as we get underway here. The final 10 minutes of this one. Will there be a goal or will we have kicks from the mark? Uh, worth noting too that Gracie Smith yep. for Fairmont State back in the lineup, so good to see her uh, recovered. There was some contact in the box and she went down, had to miss the last couple of minutes there from the outside back spot for the Fighting Falcons, but she's back in. It's a good job from Shen to hold down the fort for a few minutes and keep this game scoreless in her place at that outside back position. And right now, Taylor Kennedy credited with 12 saves in this match. She's earned her paycheck today. That's right. Done a, done a terrific job. And again, I think that last save is mm -hmm. mostly about positioning yep. and reading the play and getting in the right spot than, than having to make a terrifically athletic save. We saw her do that, though, as well, so... Doing it all here for Fairmont State. Really good turn inside from Fiaco Miser. And then the shot once again from Thompson blocked. Cross in. Kennedy making the catch as she has all day. On the line again today, an automatic berth into the NCAA tournament. And whichever team is able to come away with the victory, it'll be their first Mountain East Conference tournament championship title. Huge punt there by Kennedy. Yeah, that's one way to relieve pressure on your yeah, defenses. Right. Hit it 70 yards. Exactly. Let's forget this build up and let's just knock it down there. Free kick for Frostburg State. 
Once again, it'll be Hallman launching the set piece. Going long up the right side. That one died a little bit in the wind, headed by Lamasters. Hallman, long up the right side. Stays in play, but unable to be brought down cleanly in that situation by Carolyn DeSena. Puerto Sorto trying to turn, does so nicely, looking for some support as she works up the left side. She will get a throw in for her work. Chance for the Falcons to commit some numbers forward. Throw it towards Puerto Sorto. Followed over her head, trying to work in Kuzinski, and it comes all the way out for a goal kick. Frostburg State's won five games by a 1 0 score this season. Last few have been one nothing, including the last time these two teams met. It was a one nothing victory for Frostburg State. So Bobcats able to win low-scoring affairs when they need to. Again, you're talking about two of the better defensive teams in the conference. We've talked a lot about NCAA positioning, NCAA seating. If this goes to penalty case, it would go down as a tie. That's correct. That's right. So that would maybe help Fairmont State's record in terms of a bid versus a loss. Of course, well, a win would be ideal. Absolutely. You just kind of outlined it. Um, you know, the way that the regional rankings and all these, you know, uh, elements work, a, a victory over a team like Frostburg State would do wonders. Um, obviously, it's an automatic berth. But, that you know, Fairmont State gets a lot of credit for beating a team like West Virginia State in the mm -hmm. previous round um, in terms of, you know, the way that the math works for selection for the NCAA tournament coming into this one. Fair, Fra Fairmont State was eighth in those rankings. Eight teams make it. Uh, you do have to allow for the automatic berths um, from uh, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Long ball looking for Puerto Sorto. Really well handled under pressure there by the defender, Hallman. Will be a throw in for the Falcons with six minutes left in this period. Will Masters trying to volley it for herself. Hallman once again comes in to head it away. Bit of a miss hit on the clear. Unfortunate there for Kathleen Smith that that didn't go right to Kuzinski. Uh, I was waiting for that flag to go up. It did look like it went out of play, and it did. Well, Masters calling for it. Gets it on the left side. Goes down. That's a Frostburg State defender, but no foul either way. Bobcats will try and build it out of their own end here. Finally, the option is just to knock it clear for a throw in. Well defended there by Fairmont State to not allow an outlet pass. Yeah, and I think Fairmont State's picked its spots when it wants to go forward and attack. You know, we've talked about, you know, playing uh, just a couple of substitutes. And so I think they've been a little bit more judicious about throwing numbers forward and when they've, ha when they've tried to uh, attack. So we have a fighting Falcon down on the ground. Clock will stop here with 5.04 left and the trainer will be waved on. <laughs> The Fairmont State bench is just saying, get up, <laughs> just keep playing. <laughs> but now that she, the clock stops, she has to come off. Yeah, I think that was, that was why Fairmont State was trying to urge LeMasters, I believe, to get up. Yeah, it is LeMasters. Frustration on her face as she has to leave this game. Yeah, and it, well, honestly, it seemed like it did seem like a quick whistle to mm -hmm. stop play and uh, and uh, stop she, the clock. Yeah, too. she was down, but she was moving. It right. wasn't like she was, you know, stationary on the ground. Right, and and you didn't. I don't think you know check. Right, like hey, or, or can you play? It was, it was so anyway. She's going to come off. Right, uh, but they're not going to substitute her, so she'll um, get the permission from the fourth official to come back into the game. And that's good thinking to to not have a to substitute not, to not burn stand right by. Yeah, yeah. And she's now back back on the field. I would think she would certainly be in the penalty kick rotation for this Fairmont State team, Will Masters. Yeah, this will be, you know, the like we said before, this will be the first uh, round of shootouts uh, for either of these two sides, making it through the other two rounds in the conference tournament um, with a result before getting to penalties. Christensen laid out to the side there by Gillespie. I'm not 100% sure, though, that there's not a goal in this game. I'm with you. 
Maybe it'll come here, not according to the tackle from Emily Wallen. Cross in towards the far post and a big play just to get a finger on that from Kennedy and it's cleared out of the six. She made sure that, wasn't, that one wasn't going to go in. Frostburg State is sniffing it right now. Four minutes to go. Long shot bending wide off the right foot of Hallman. Have another, another look at it. And again, she gets a hand on Then it hits, uh, hits the post, I believe, uh, after she tipped it. And uh, Taylor Kennedy, before taking this goal kick, urging the crowd from Fairmont State. And again, not a long trip for the Fighting Falcons and a good crowd here from both sides and a, a vocal Fairmont State crowd. Both benches are on their feet, animated, willing their teammates to get the winner here in the final three minutes and change of this second overtime of the MEC Championship game. Good turn there. Fiaco Miser, double teamed. Yep. Tackle in, we'll knock it out for a throw in. Throw in towards the corner of the 18 yard box. Drop back. Fiaco Miser will win another throw in. Burton is there with her. She'll get it. Burton trying to turn, shielding that ball. Out for a throw in deep. I don't know why she didn't try and cross that. And she had it, the better angle. Yeah, and it was dangerously close to being a corner kick here in the waning minutes. That's what she was trying for. Trying for it again here. Yep. Yako Meiser turning out of trouble. Keeps that one in. And now it does finally go out. It looked like, yes, it did. Yeah. Throw in for Fairmont State. Yeah, it looked like Frostburg, like you said, Frostburg State looking maybe for a corner set opportunity here in the final minutes. Ends up, Fairmont State's going to have a deep throw. Tristan Bright getting instructions on the Fairmont State sideline. We'll have a couple minutes between the second OT and penalty. Should it go to that, I would think that would be the time you'd maybe see some people warm up that haven't played in this game that might be in the shootout. Frostburg State. Trying to keep it from getting to that point. Cross in low. Clear it out. A corner kick will come here. Yeah, here we go. And this is a big opportunity, as we said earlier. Everyone's big, but this is yeah, and, this and, might be the last one. And I've been keeping an eye on Kat Smith on some of these corners. Number 14 for Frostburg State. She has uh, she likes to go forward and is a good target here for the Bobcats. Crossed in towards the middle. Gets through a couple players. Whacked clear. And 14 was there. That was her. She didn't get the header on it, but she was in the mixer. Hammond gives it away. Chance to push forward for Fairmont State. Taking their time getting this ball forward and playing it to a side where nobody's there. Yeah, I thought that might be an opportunity. Fairmont State might throw the kitchen sink, but even in those moments, I think a little conservative. And I think the issue there was the player on the ball was Christensen. I don't think she wanted to take a risk. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Because obviously, uh, arguably your best defender. Knocked out for a throw in. 36 seconds left. Is there a goal in this one or will we go to kicks from the mark? Cleared again by Fairmont State. Volleyed once more by Schneider. It'll fall on the right side. Come centrally now. Can the Bobcats manufacture one last gasp here? Hallman will try. Launching it in the box. Volleyed away again. Header one towards the top of the 18. Chested down. No turn given by Fairmont State. It'll come right. One last hopeful serve in. Will be caught by Taylor Kennedy. And that will do it. We are headed to kicks from the mark to decide the MEC Women's Championship. Well, we had uh, nothing resolved yet. A really good play here in, in regulation. Uh, Frostburg State, I think, had the better of the chances um, in each of those overtime sessions, but not able to get that final touch to find that goal. And now here we go for penalties. Counting down from five minutes between the second overtime period and the beginning of the penalty shootout. We will step aside here at Bobcat Stadium. Go nowhere. <laughs> we will have kicks from the mark for a championship here in Frostburg. Stay with us. We are there for you to care for you at the health plan. We are
Things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. At Encova Insurance, we're committed to leaving a lasting impression in all communities we serve. We support local causes that mirror the values and interests of our associates, agents, and policyholders. We partner with organizations that are dedicated to improving lives. We are committed to building something greater than ourselves. Encircling our communities with strength and support, we are Encova Insurance. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the 12 proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Welcome back. Drama building here at Bobcat Stadium, the Mountain East Conference Women's Championship game between the Frostburg State Bobcats and the Fairmont State Falcons is going to kicks from the mark. So we'll alternate kicks for five rounds. If it's still tied, we'll go round by round from there. And it's interesting because we talked about it earlier, you don't want to show too much. Fairmont State has only taken one penalty kick this year and they missed it. <laughs> Frostburg State a little better. They're four for seven on the year from the spot. Yeah, it's, it's hard to draw any conclusions from that because just things are, are, are just different here in this situation. Um, but it's interesting, though, that, uh, you know, Frostburg State did score one penalty against Fairmont State this season Fairmont. in that first matchup. Fairmont State assistant coach Emily Gallagher talking to the referees, giving the order for the Falcons while they huddle on their sideline. Frostburg State's ready to go. <laughs> They're already out there, ready to begin this one. Both keepers have played so well, Adam. One save completely changes the complexion of the shootout if you can get one. Yeah, and it'll be curious to see, you know, who won the coin toss, who's going first, who's kicking, you know, who's kicking second. Um, you know, you mentioned the MLS playoffs uh, and the final yesterday. You know, you get one, you've got a little bit of momentum, uh, you know, but uh, I feel a little bit like momentum is, uh, you know, your next, what is it in baseball, is the next day starting pitcher. Yeah. Momentum is as good as, the, as your next taker or, or the next uh, play by uh, your goalkeeper. And I'll reiterate something I said earlier. Anybody on the game near roster can take a kick. You don't have to be on the field when the second overtime ends. That's unlike the professional ranks. So we might see someone who we haven't seen all day be the hero in this game. Yeah, and, and I always find it interesting about, uh, you know, penalty take. You think, oh, your goal scorer is going to be your best penalty kick. That's mm -hmm. not always the case. Right. Um, 
you know, a lot of true goal scorers, true, true goal scorers, they don't necessarily want to be in this spot. A lot of times your defenders are good penalty kick takers yeah. because they have to be precise. Yeah, and they can, and they bang them and they hit them hard. And it looks like Fairmont State's going to kick first. That's Ashley Bilger making her way into the net. What's your philosophy on priority? Do you have your best taker go first? Oh, man, that is that is a tough one. I, 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 I do because I don't, I don't want to wait till four or five mm -hmm. because it might be over by then, and I don't want to uh, be left with any gun, uh, bullets in the, in the gun. So um, I, I try to put my best out there. Ava Bear will take it left-footed for Fairmont State against Bilger. Bear against Bilger, top of the first round here for Fairmont State. Bears first kick, taken right-footed. Textbook, top right corner. Wow, that is really well placed. Uh, that, you know, in these situations too, <laughs> the goalkeeper's in such a difficult spot. It's tough for the goalkeeper to make a play, but that is a really well taken penalty there by Bear. Look at that, just side netting almost. Beautiful. We talked about defenders being good PK takers. <laughs> Abby Dennis leads uh -huh. off. There you go. She got the armband on her, captain, leader, defensive player of the year, stepping to the spot. Grad student. Takes it. That's another Ooh. good one to the left of the keeper. It was a good one, and Kennedy had it red, just wasn't able to get there. So both these keepers beaten for the first time today in the first round of the shootout, one-to-one one as we take a second look at that kick. Yeah, Kennedy's there. Or she has she has it red, but it gets past her. See Kennedy and Nett clap her hands. I mentioned it earlier. I, I knew Trisha Masters would be an option here. She'll be the second kicker for Fairmont State. Was automatic from the spot in high school for Fairmont Senior. Kicking for her hometown team in the MEC Championship game against Ashley Bilger. Trisha Masters. So right now it's one make each. We're in the second round. Well, Masters, right-footed, steps up, buries it in the opposite corner. I tell you what, we've seen three PKs, and we've seen three really well-taken PKs here. 2-1 going to the bottom of the second. Right on top of it. That is well struck. Taylor Kennedy's turn to toe the line. She will face off against Leela Clark, who's three for three from the spot this year. And she puts Ooh. it in the top corner also. That one looked like it might have been heading a little high, but it found its way into the back of the net. Yeah, it actually looked pretty similar to the first one taken by Bear and almost in a similar spot, but definitely tucks it under. And we have two makes each. Kiera Kuzenski has not taken a penalty yet this year. She'll lead off the third round. Both teams have made both of their kicks so far as we head towards the halfway point. Can Bilger pull off a save? Will Kuzenski give her team the lead back? Oh. Kuzenski misses over the bar. And you said it, Adam. Sometimes the best goal scorers are not the best from 12 yards with the pressure on. Yeah, 17 goals this year, but misses from the spot. That's got to be a tough one to take. You know, you, you want to put it on frame, obviously, and that one just sails on her. Desiree Mortimer will try and give Frostburg State the lead in I'm the third round. I'm not sure if I could want to read mouths, but I think Taylor Kennedy was yelling back, I got you, to Kiera Kaczynski. Bottom corner low. A riskier take, but it works for Mortimer. Yeah, it was all about placement on that one. Didn't have a ton of pace, wasn't in the air. But she's got Kennedy leading one way, so just, just make sure, right? Boom. I mentioned it earlier. We might see something we don't normally see. Tristan Bright, the substitute. We'll take this one. So Frostburg State with three to two. We are starting round four. Bright founds the corner, but that was very close to being Woo. saved by Ashley Bilger. Bilger again had a good read on it there, but 
Bright slips it under for the score. Fairmont State players exhorting their fans to pump up Taylor Kennedy here. Frostburg State in control. They've made three. Fairmont's made three. Fourth round. If you like innings, this is bottom of the fourth here. Frostburg State trying to keep its advantage. Kayla Robinson. Saved. Saved by Kennedy. Even Steven now going to the fifth round. Both teams have made three. Taylor Kennedy is pumped, and rightfully so. Yeah, and, to, and let's clarify, that's the first one that was saved. Kaczynski's yes. went over the crossbar, yes. so Kennedy gets both gloves on this one. Pretty clean save. I don't know if you saw this, Adam. There was a Mountain West shootout that went 22 rounds <laughs> a week ago. Mountain East, we'll see if they well, can do what the see. Mountain West did. Let's see. Now we are top five, top five here. Jessica Schneider for the Falcons against Bilger. Schneider, well taken. Wow. Into the side netting to the left of goalkeeper Ashley Bilger. And now, if Kennedy can save this one, Fairmont will win. And let's see who's coming to the spot here for Frostburg State. As we take another look at that penalty, again, really well taken penalties here today. DeSena. Carolyn DeSena. Fiaco Miser, their best scorer this year, is only one for three from the spot. We have not seen her in the shootout. DeSena misses! And Fairmont State is the MEC champions. They win the shootout four to three. Frostburg State made their first three. Kennedy saved the fourth, and then the fifth is missed. And the Falcons, for the first time, will lift the trophy. Wow, what a finish here at Frostburg State, down to the last penalty. And, you know, I go back to the moment when Kiera Kaczynski sails her over the top. I saw Taylor Kennedy, as we take another look at that one, goes wide, and Kennedy gets right up. Taylor Kennedy yells, back to the lineup. I got you. I got you. And she sure did. She made that save. That one goes wide. Fairmont State is the Mountain East Conference tournament champions for the first time in history. They beat two divisional champions to win the MEC title. Yeah, and they punched their, their ticket into the NCAA tournament. Top seven teams get in there. Fairmont State's going to be one of them. Um, you'd like to – Frostburg State – almost certainly will be one of them. But what a road here for the Fighting Falcons. You talked about it. Two divisional winners, two nationally ranked teams. Fairmont State did not do it the easy way. It was not an easy road. But the Fighting Falcons are champions. Here's what I love. The team celebrating. Kennedy is sitting. She's finally getting to rest <laughs> after a busy day and go, what, 12 saves in the first 110 minutes of this game. And then she saves a penalty to totally flip the script in this shootout that her team wins. Yeah, you know, and she was not short on confidence at any part of this game. She was vocal. She ends, uh, ends the game with 13 saves. The saves and the penalty are not uh, counted, obviously, towards that total. But 13 saves today keeps the shutout. You, you mentioned it earlier. This will go down officially as a draw. Um, but another shutout for Fairmont State um, on its way to this tournament title. Back to wrap up this thrilling Mountain East Conference Women's Final from Frostburg after this. Stay with us. Life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. We are there for you to care for you. We are here for you. We are there for you, to care for you, at the health plan. We are here for you. The moment that Fairmont State has been waiting for has arrived. They are the Mountain East Conference Women's Soccer Tournament Champions. 
and it's right that Taylor Kennedy is the player to lift at Adam Zundel. Yeah, she was terrific all day. She made big-time plays, and obviously when you come to that penalty kick situation, you're going to need your keeper to come up big, and that was a big-time play. And I, I want to give credit to both squads mm -hmm. here. They did a terrific job here. It was an outstanding final. It was worthy of a championship. It was really, really well played. Frostburg State has a lot of good things ahead of them here um, You know, in the postseason. A well-played match um, from, from both sides, and uh, – uh, it was very, very exciting here. Despite not having a goal, um, it goes to penalties, and I just think that it was, uh, again, a well-played game worthy of a final. You see the final moment there, the joy from Taylor Kennedy and just the disappointment from DeSena sitting there on the field after missing that final penalty kick for Frostburg State. Yeah, what a heart, game this was. Yeah, your heart breaks for, for the players in that situation. Um, nobody wants to, to, to be in that spot that, that you feel like you cost your, your team the game, and that's not true. It, it came down to that play, yes, but there were a lot of moments in this match where I think either team could have come up with a play. It didn't happen. It comes down to that moment, and your heart breaks uh, for those players at the same time that you uh, congratulate the other team for coming up with the plays necessary to, to again, hoist the trophy. Final thoughts on this one, Adam. What a final. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was great to, to sit here and, and be witness to this well-played match. I thought we saw a lot of good play and a lot of good skill. Um, I'm not sure who's going to want to take on these teams. This was a really – these are two really good teams. And, again, coming out of the North Division – Frostburg State wins the regular season for the North, so they've had a terrific year. Again, I think NCAA tournament postseason ahead of them. It's going to be really dangerous. Um, just couldn't find that final touch in the final third today. Fairmont State, for some stretches, hung in there, then got on the front foot, I think held in there for the double overtime, and then you, know, you take your chances with penalties, and they come away winners. Neither one of these teams conceded a single goal in the conference tournament in a pressure situation. Like you said, that's really got to make them feel good for NCAA play. Yeah, and it's, and it's hard to walk away from a tournament not giving up a goal and not being able to lift a trophy, right? That's, that's just kind of a difficult part to, 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 to deal with. But at the end of the day, that's the nature of this game. And, and uh, you know, I think Frostburg State's going to lament some chances they maybe had to score um, in the run of play and dur during regulation or overtime. But uh, this is the way that, that it shook out. It went to penalties, and, and Fairmont State, all of a sudden, are your champions. Again, this ends in a tie, technically, so Frostburg State moves to 18-1-2 and two entering the NCAA tournament. Fairmont State, they have earned the automatic bid. They finish the year at 12-3-5. It's team photo time in Frostburg for the visitors. Fairmont State wins the Mountain East Conference tournament and penalty kicks. For Adam Zundo and Michael Minnick, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to our team here in Frostburg. Goodbye. And we'll see you next time. We are there for you to care for you at the health plan. We are here for you. We are there for you.